Hello, my name is Michael Wilson, and I'm producer of the film. And uh, my name is Martin Campbell, I'm the director of the film. This is the new United Artists logo. It's the first time they've used it on a Bond film. And uh, here we are at the opening uh, down the barrel shot, as they say, which has been uh, redone, I think, technically far better. And there's Piers Brosnan, of course, who uh, is the new James Bond, and a terrific James Bond, I think, he turned out to be. Yeah, Martin, you you shot this. Remember when you re re reshot it? Uh after someone else had done it. Yeah, I, I think it was to do with, I remember when you came up and said to me that uh, the way he's standing, mm. that you didn't like mm. him quite rightly, um, mm. the way he was holding the gun, the way he turned the camera didn't seem right, so uh, we had to get the correct physical look to the movie. And here we are in Lugano in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, you, you supervised all this, didn't you? Yeah, well, it was uh, done by the uh, second unit director, Ian Sharp, and uh, he was down there doing this work. It's a tremendously high dam. I mean, the great problem here, as you'll see the stunt in a, in a second, is, of course, to get a dam that was virtually vertical and didn't actually uh, uh, kind of um, pan out at the bottom so that when he makes the jump, he doesn't hit himself on the concrete. Actually, there was a, a fairly large crane, I think, Mike, wasn't there, to yeah, hold him out? Yeah, I had from a crane the... to keep him out. And the big problem was it did slope, and he wasn't so concerned about hitting it on the way down, but, you know, the bungee cord bounces back and he was afraid he was going to scrape himself against the uh, wall. Well, it's a hell of a jump. I mean, it's, mm. I think, a world record, wasn't it, in terms yeah. of the actual jump? There's no cheating here, by the way. There's no digital. It's entirely what you see is take one, I seem to remember, was it? That's right. We didn't do this again. And just look at the way he now pulls the gun out. Now, I think this takes real nerve and concentration. Now, given the distance he's dropped, he'll now pull the gun out and he does it so smoothly and easily, it's perfect. I mean, that takes uh, a very skillful stunt. You, you know, I asked him what he was thinking of just before he jumped off, and he said, the last thought that went in my mind was Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is all second unit, of course, and they did a terrific job of this, and now, of course, we are back in the studio doing, um, getting into the uh, nitty-gritty of the scene. The first the shot button. of Pierce Brosnan, the eyes, right there. We were holding him back a bit, you remember? Just sort of for that Oh, that's right. The idea was not to actually see who it is until, um, and we, we never see who this person is until uh, he's revealed um, in a few seconds. But this was actually a real toilet. There was no set. We actually used the toilet uh, that was um, in the studio that we had made up. Yeah, we put. To, we went out to Leavesden and made a studio at the old Rolls Royce plant, and uh, this was part of the facilities that were actually there. Now we see him for the first time. There he is, right. And Peter Lamont built all of this within the confines. The sets were built out at uh, Leaves in the old Rolls-Royce factory in London. Um, I think there's 200 acres on that site, isn't there, Mike? Yeah, and, and we were using, uh, when we get into the gas plant, which is coming up, we were using the uh, engine testing room, the jet engine testing rooms. And so they're very substantially built building. Yeah, and of course a lot of this is incorporated in the set that we're about to see in the big uh, gas plant. Um, Peter Lamont did a terrific job of all this stuff. And... Uh, um, in fact, I think this was all kitchens from the cafeteria that was once used on the site. Here we're going to see Sean Bean now. I got this idea from Butch Cast in the Sundance Kid. Okay, so he moves forward into the light. Now, he's not the villain that we think he is or a Russian soldier. He is, in fact, uh, 006. So there's a scene in Butch Cassidy very similar to that, which, uh, of course, you always pinch from the best, so I did. And, and of course, we wanted to cast someone who actually was a potential Bond type, you know, the same type of guy, same age, same look. Yeah, what was important was that, you know, given the previous villains have always been like, um, like Goldfinger, for example, Gert Frode, they've all kind of been maniacs or they've been the head of Spectre, the head of Smirsch, so on and so forth. This, of course, is 006, so uh, it was important, I think, that uh, we all agreed that Sean Bean could have actually at one time played Bond um, and was a contender, so who better? What's interesting about that, by the way, we just saw an execution that was totally in your mind by sound effects and all. Everything's off camera, but it's very effective. Well, actually, what's interesting about that was I remember the German censor came <laughs> across. And uh, one of the things, mm -hmm. ironically, there's very little he complained about the uh, um, piece, you know, seeing the film. He said that was one of them, was the two guys being hit so early on. 
he thought the German market may uh, object to that. By a guy that was supposed to be a hero at the time. Of course, yeah. he did turn out to be a villain. Yeah, but uh, it was a good point. I don't think the film lost anything because of it. This is very cleverly done, Martin. This was part of your uh, the magic of cinema. You've got this set, so it looks like both there's a stairway and a door on both sides of the set, although it was only one-sided. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you can cheat, of course. I know. I was, I'm always amazed when I see this, and I think, God, how, you know, how, what you can do with this. How did, now, here we have uh, Oromov, of course, who's played by Gottfried John, a German actor who speaks extremely good English, although everybody you will note that is Russian has a Russian accent. Of course, they're talking um, Queen's English, but with a Russian accent. Um, and I think he brings to the part of the, the Russian general um, a very interesting, um, a very interesting slant, and largely because he's the actor he is. Nothing that I contributed. I mean, he's an excellent actor. Yeah, quirky, interesting. I think. Original. <laughs> One of the nice things about Pierce is that uh, he managed to uh, continue the element of humour about it. You know, he, he he had the ability to be able to be self-effacing, to be able to deliver the humorous lines. Um, and uh, he's an actor that has that ability, and um, I think it shows it shows him up well in the picture. Yeah, this is a very tense moment here. Interesting point. We had to cut the actual shooting. We, it was originally the original cut. Shooting uh, through the head here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that actually, it turns out that... Um, both censors in the U.S. and England objected to that. And so you'll see, of course, you don't actually see him pull the trigger. You don't see a, him fall over. That's there. right. Yeah. That was a censor cut. Again, I don't think it lost anything. And uh, there he goes, yeah. Blow the gas tanks! Yes. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Come out with your hands above your... And here's uh, Bond creeping across the floor. What I always thought was amazing about this was you put a uh, squeaky wheel in here, and it always <laughs> yes. got a big laugh in the cinemas. It's one of those things that you do thinking, well, we need a little squeak here, and, and yet it, it has a reaction with the audience. That's, uh, now, isn't that bizarre? I still to this day don't quite know why. I, I put it in because all my supermarket trolleys, you know, you always get, I always get the one with the squeak, and it seemed that given there's mm -hmm. silence virtually in the scene... I remember this was a, that was a little element you insisted on having written in. Now, you know where I pinched that from? The Wild Bunch, Sam Peckinpah. I pinched all these moments, mm -hmm. of course, from other movies, but I, uh, there was a moment in The Wild Bunch where uh, um, the Mexican lieutenant shoots one of his men for doing just that. So. You can't. Mm -hmm. now, this is this... very interesting from effects, wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, this big one. effect. This... A lot of stuntmen got paid that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But also, Chris Corbold, who was the effects guy, had those bar barrels punched out in, in, mm -hmm. in, uh, with levers and things to get the, uh, to get the distance. Remember the plane yeah. with the... Uh, uh, you want to talk about how it was powered? Yeah, this one... <laughs> yeah, this plane actually was a little motor. It drove the wheels on a chain drive, so the, the propeller's not doing anything. It's all being driven by its own wheels. But it is a real plane body we had. We made it up. And uh, this is all in the back lot. This is a Derek Manning's painting. Which was shot all in camera. There's yeah. not a process in that shot. It's all the, entirely the, shot on camera. It's a mat with the center cut out with the airfield in the middle with real people. Beautiful yeah, job. Yeah, tremendous job, that. And there's great stunt work in this as well. Simon Crane, the stunt arranger, who, by the way, also did Braveheart, um, did a tremendous job on this and kind of very inventive, I think, with the stunts and so forth. Um, the stunt you're about to see, of course, is uh, one that everybody kind of starts to laugh at. It's so crazy, mm -hmm. but in a way, I think it's probably pure James Bond in my view. It's That's right. When we were up on the top of the mountains in Switzerland, I was down there and, uh, and we're shooting this thing. We actually shot this jump seven times God, that's to get it. Right. And uh, it was a guy named Zhu, that French guy, who did this jump. He was Now, that's all for real, you see, there. Yeah. And, of course, am I right? It was so difficult to line up the... It was the timing. Motorcycle, because the... The plane never touched the runway, of course. No, it, was like, it came overhead and then the motorcycle was underneath. That's right. It was about uh, 10 feet above it. And actually, when you see the snow spray out from the wheels, that was all done digitally, in fact. Yeah, and this was, some of this was uh, done with a diver and some was done with Pierce in the studio. And, and uh, the models and all sorts of things. A wide shot there. Was, yeah. That's what's on. So tying all these elements up was... Uh, that's a model going down the ground. We did the model once. Here. Remember, we rebuilt the model yep, and we redid it, it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad, but uh, mm. in the end, it works. So, and I think um, 
it sort of brings Bond right back into what Bond was, which is uh, those kind of things are slightly ludicrous, but nevertheless, uh, I think everybody enjoyed that uh, scene. They certainly laughed at it by the time he gets into the... Now, this is Danny Kleiman's uh, uh, visual effect. Uh... Well, of course, our real problem here, wasn't it, was to find somebody who would inherit the mantle from... Um, Morris well, Binder. Morris Binder, that's right. God, I can never n never remember his name. Well, you didn't work with him, but he was a great guy. Yeah. Was wonderful. You know, what's interesting about this, uh, we had... Um, I just got a copy of the Moscow Times from Russia. Huh. And they say that uh, well, this was one of the most offensive things to the... Uh, Indian Communist Party and several other Communist parties that are still active throughout the world that the icons of Russian communism were destroyed not by a militaristic invasion or anything but by bikini clad women in high heels and hammers and I was, was, they, they took the sort of symbolism of all this like the competing the cultures oh, I very see. much to heart and yes. they were going to boycott the film in india oh my god Park, simply primarily because of this sequence to take uh, make fun of these uh, almost religious icons oh i see that's interesting isn't it it's and fun. it's uh, when you look at it in that light you see uh, what, what they must have been talking about <laughs> yes Oh, well, but I mean, what's interesting about the sequence is that Danny Kleiman, you know, I think plays a real homage to uh, Morris Binder. And I think it's got the kind of sexiness. I think it has uh, something to do with the theme of the story. So he's kept that um, flame burning, really. And I think uh, he did a marvelous job of this. I was so thrilled when I saw it for the first time. I mean, it was... Uh... Yeah, he, he showed it to us in uh, drawings and uh, he it, it did a beautiful storyboard. It really came out very close, including the colors, which was quite amazing. Isn't yeah, it? he did a lot of preparation. They did a lot of work and they did a very fine job. And I always thought Terry Rawlings got a good one here. He good credit. He was very happy with that. <laughs> yes, I don't know about <laughs> Phil May, who he would probably complain <laughs> like he always does, of course, on these things. You know, he doesn't get the credits uh, at all masked and so forth. There's Eric Serra's credit. He was uh, a, a kind of a an experiment, you know, to take a, a sort of, uh, go from the traditional music. I think it worked quite well, but it has been somewhat controversial among them. Yeah, I think, you know, there's some people have said they thought it was terrific, others say they didn't like it at all. I think uh, those that were offended by it were the, the aficionados who wanted, you know, the old Bond themes and, and so forth. Um, but, uh, of course, we must remember we have a generation uh, beyond the previous Bond film who are seeing Bond for the first time. So there was an attempt there to actually bring those people into And, of the... course, Tina Turner was great. Oh, oh she, she was, was such, wonderful. She really belts it out. She was a great trooper, a wonderful, wonderful result. And, and getting Bono on the edge to write the song was a real coup. So yeah, that was, that was uh, absolutely great. Now, here we are, of course, we're about to be introduced to our femme fatale, which is... Um, Famke Jansen, uh, Jansen and the yeah. red Ferrari, which, uh, as you know, everyone is holding their breath because we only had that on loan. And, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and actually, there is a shot here which you've got to see, which I remember you coming back apoplectic one day, or well, Barbara was, you know, and it's, it, it'll happen uh, very quickly here where it skids down the shingle. And in fact, they collided. Of course, we cut away before that moment, but... Uh, That's right. We knifed both cars were sort of... Uh, and I think mm -hmm. they said the bill was something like $80,000. Here we go here, right? Right now, there. The next cut... That's when that, they hit. That's when the they tapes, hit. Yeah. But of course, we cut off uh, earlier, and uh, they had to repair the car overnight to bring it back in so we could film in the morning. Now, Barbara went down on this unit and, and was working, and they had terrible problems because we were shooting this, although it was the south of France, they had... It would be sunny one day and snowing the next. Uh, and misty, do you remember the mist? Oh, I, I was up fogs. there. I shot all the close-ups, by the way. The, the rest of it, um, it should be said, actually, that I storyboarded it. Remember yes, when we storyboarded, we looked at these sequences, we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the, in fact, all the action sequences were very precisely storyboarded. Oh, and, frame for frame, it was good. Yeah, and we had a wonderful storyboard artist whose work you know, could go into an art gallery, mm -hmm. quite honest. But all of this was storyboarded very much as you see it, but a great job by the second unit. Um, I, of course, shot the close-ups, indeed, mm -hmm. with the actors and so forth. But all the action stuff was shot by a very um, competent, very good second unit. Yeah, it's Ian, Ian Sharp and then Harvey uh, Harrison was photographer. Uh, yes, who had many a good night, I seem to remember, at restaurants. <laughs> 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 he did a good job here. We were, yes, he did. Marvelous out, job. Turned out well. Yes, here she is, and uh, so all of this, a lot of this is um, under crank camera, of course, mm -hmm. but not enough to um, yeah, make it obvious. Yeah, 20 
20 frames or something, not just to add a little edge to it. Yeah, just to add. And every, every, often the frame count was different for each particular shot, I mean, given what they had to do. Do you remember all this with the bicyclists? Oh, how we oh edited this God. up we, and down, in and we out. We couldn't make this work. <laughs> you know, if we held on any longer, it made the whole thing seem just too stupid. And uh, mm-hmm. finally, Terry Rawlings would come back and he'd recut it and we'd recut it. And, you know, nobody was happy until finally, I think we... We put we, this shot in. Yeah, remember we put the shot in. It. That was it. We tried to find that shot. We yeah. couldn't tie him up before. I knew it was there because I'd storyboarded it, but we had to dig it out of the files and here you go. And, and we don't dwell on it. Now we go, they will fall over. The French, of course, <laughs> hated this bit. <laughs> and here they go, yes. That's and the right. Ferrari is an interesting one. Do you remember we had to put the Ferrari in or we had to pay the bill for the dent? We had to pay the bill for the dent and, and having like that extending shot to make sure that the Ferrari beat the... Uh, That's, <laughs> yes, otherwise, the we'd have to, yes. <laughs> otherwise we'd have to pay the money to uh, repair it. Now, this is interesting. This is a studio shot, the two shot in the car frontal, and, of course, behind it is... Um, Another shot that was reshot Yes, <laughs> yes. The, oh, God, yes, the uh, bloody That's champagne right. bottle. The first time they did it, they put the label in upside down. Yes, and you couldn't see what, what the hell it was, so we redid that. Now, of course, we cut to Monte Carlo itself, or, and there we have it. Now, the next sequence is a scene I, I'm, I've always liked, I think you've always liked, mm, you know, beautiful. which is the gambling, the classic Bond gambling scene with all the kind of pizzazz that only Monte Carlo Casino can give you. Wonderful shot at night. Phil Mayhew did a great job here. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, it's just as beautiful as it can be. It's really fairyland here. Yeah, and it just looks really, really classy. He did a marvelous shot. Um, And uh, do you remember him driving that Aston Martin? Yep. The steering wheel (laughs) fell off. He left the handbrake on. Of course, we had the owner of this hugely expensive restored car who was looking apoplectic Mm -hmm. by the time... You know, yeah. he may be Bond in the movies, but when it comes to driving cars, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Now, this is actually the casino, remember? This mm-hmm. was the big shot we did in the real casino. That's right. This, I always think this is the most expensive shot in the film because it took, you know, we had do it at night. It was turnaround. We only had one shot we could do. That's correct. At so 12 it took o'clock two days. Night, was it? They yeah. wouldn't let us in until 12 at night. And then, yeah. and then we went up and did that shot uh, craning up behind right. the, uh, the uh, with them and the Ferrari kissing. But it, uh, because it was in turnaround, it tossed two days. So yeah. that it, 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 it's yeah. a, now look at Peter Lamont's work here. You're, it's match. It's seamless, really. This stuff. That's right. He duplicated everything from the original casino. Yes. So apart from the one shot we were pointed out earlier, all of this is studio, and it all cuts in. You know, this is one of the first things we shot. This sequence here, and uh, I saw the rushes, and then very soon Terry, because he cuts so fast, had it all cut together. When I saw this. I knew that uh, Pierce was going to be James Bond. There was no doubt about it, and that he was going to be accepted. Yeah, you remember we did the test scene on this? Yeah. We did a test scene with the various girls to play the scene and so forth. And uh, um, we learned a few pointers from that, but... uh, and it's a scene I'm, I, I thought was a, uh, it's a scene I love this, and it's... Um, it really introduces Bond in a, in a great way, and it's... Uh, now, interestingly, those... that pair of bosoms you can see behind I think it's probably Miss Venezuela do you remember they oh, brought yes. in everybody from <laughs> she I think she'd won a, con- a contest from uh, License to Kill where she was entitled <laughs> to be in the next movie so six years later it uh, paid <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> a little older perhaps but there she is um, uh, the second unit shot a lot of the close-ups of the card stuff by the way all this kind of slots in and uh, they picked up these shots of the cards being turned all of which is very essential I think to um, you know, do you remember all the uh, the questions we had about the uh, numbers we should put on and everything? There's actually the symbolism here. She comes in and it's double O. Oh, that's right. Seven. That's right. So she actually has double O seven, and he uh, turns over double O six. That's right. And the interesting thing, um, remember, I got you to rehearse them. I couldn't. The, I knew nothing about we the game. So Michael, I. <laughs> Sat down for hours with them, teaching them the game and 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 the, the way to handle the cards and so forth. That's, uh, I know nothing about gambling, uh, least of all that game. But you did all the rehearsal. Except making remember. movies, which is a gamble. <laughs> yes. I like the way he plays this scene. Yes, there. it's kind of subtle, but it's humorous. So it's, and she mm-hmm. does this. Look at her stroking the cigar off on that yeah. line. She's a very clever actress, I think, Famka. She does. She did. The, the, she. This was her role. She yeah. loved it. She had a lot of fun with it. And uh, far more difficult, I think, to play than a lot of people would think. I mean, given what she had to do and make it convincing mm-hmm. and funny and everything else. Because right here, you don't know whether she's good or bad. You know. You're well, do you think she's sure. going to be the lead girl? I think, yeah. don't you? You think, God, this is going to be the Bond girl. This is going to be the uh, woman in his uh, 
life. Now watch the way when he says the business about the number plates. Mm -hmm. Very subtle change in her um, mm -hmm. performance, and she does it beautifully, you know. Dutch, of course. She's a Dutch. Uh, she lives in Los Angeles, has done for, I think, three or four years, but is Dutch. That's yeah. right, and is putting on, although she speaks English perfectly, is putting on a, a good Russian mm -hmm. accent. So. There's one thing I can say, we had a terrific voice coach, but it has to be said that the actors themselves are, I think, unanimously good at being able to be consistent with their accents. Excellent. Even Cheki Carrier, the Frenchman who plays Mishkin, who we'll be introduced to a little later. Oh, yes. Up here at night, this is another night one, colder than you'd uh, think by looking at everybody, yeah. as I remember. <laughs> Oh, we just decided to stage this with the um, with a performance. You know, again, it's really, I suppose, adapting the location and this little miniature theatre, amphitheatre, as such, into the scene. Although it hasn't got anything to do with the scene, it's uh, it's a nice it's set, in this kind of a you know. nice set and a nice touch. And and Phil, of course, lit all that. With, yeah. uh, well, to light a harbour at night is no mean feat. You want to talk about the famous continuity problem here? <laughs> Which eye? <laughs> Which you? Yes. <laughs> That's in, <laughs> that's it's in the got. studio one eye and then the cross there to the other eye. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had any member of the public pointed out. I'm looking for bloopers and things in that uh, in uh, Premier Magazine. Well, I went but... to June and I said, June, when you shot that, June, I think he had the other eye up. I, I saw the rushes a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. And, oh, no, no. She says, we looked at the steam back. You must have had it in backwards or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think he said the same to me and I said, rubbish. And, of course, you're absolutely right. Um, indeed, he does have the... Uh, um, it was wrong. I there was a continuity problem there. Now, interesting. This boat. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, we had a hell of a time. This was the boat that was the most modern, up-to-date frigate that the French had, and uh, it, we moved heaven and earth. Tom Pevsner, who speaks French fluently and can deal with these people, uh, uh, in a, in a, went down there on several occasions and finally got them to bring it into the harbor of Monaco, and it, which, you know, isn't even a French country. It's a and I think for no money. He managed to... Uh, nothing. Incredibly, no. he got the French Navy. And not only that, the helicopter on the back. And which, the helicopter in there. And we actually got to fly the helicopter within the port, which was another uh, uh, major. So Tom really came through on yeah. this one. Now, and uh, mm. I don't think any other person in the world could have done that. And, uh, <laughs> yes, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I just think how many times we had to deal with this editing and cutting yeah. it. Well, the interesting thing here is that the shadows on the back wall, which you're about to see, of course, we had two other extras, as it were, duplicating the movements at the same time on a much lower level. The set's built on Rostra, actually. But if you think about where the camera is, of course, you, the shadows couldn't exist because the camera shadow would be there, but uh, if you're lighting from behind the camera. But so we had two other people duplicating exactly what happens, which is just about to come up, so that their shadow, it's their shadows on the wall, not, of course, Famkes and uh, Billy Mitchell's here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it was a great job, and uh, uh, Phil lit it brilliantly. Yeah. Really. He used to be, he stirred the water here with, <laughs> I remember, he had little pools of water. He was using and it. what about Billy with his, he used to have fainting spells during this. Oh yeah, he got t tired. With this. That's my <laughs> hand, by the way, right? <laughs> yes. I, I always, my famous orgasm shot, which nobody seems to uh, connect, but I'm sure there's a few dirty binds that do. Um, and this is Monte Carlo, of course, which did look yeah. beautiful. We had some very nice uh, sun here. And there's a nice little skirmish about to happen, of course, which um, is an example of what uh, Simon Crane, the stunt arranger, is even a tiny skirmish. Mm -hmm. He seems to give it imagination and so forth. And uh, this yeah, is why. why this I is all it's tied up nicely between looking out the window, seeing this. It's all, all very Pink. economical in, in the way it's narrative here. A very Bond moment coming up, I think. Mm -hmm. I can imagine Sean Connery doing this mm -hmm. without any problem yep. at all. You know, it's, it's sort of equivalent to the throwing the flowers over the body, which... Uh... So now we got on board this ship and got to shoot on it for three days. They were really great. They were very, very helpful. And a lot of security restrictions, you know, given that we were and here. And the band. We actually had yeah. the band. You know. Always a big problem, by the way, on what music to play and have the right to play it. And... Yeah, and... and mm -hmm. um, and here we are, and in fact, the person you're about to see, in fact, is a member of the crew, isn't he? Um, yes, he was the uh, public public relations man, officer, yeah. and uh, we suddenly realized we need an extra actor, so we dragged him in, and here he is, doing his performance. So, uh, that was, uh, we were lucky to get someone, you know, who was capable of doing it.
Now we're back in the studio, of course, for this yeah. scene. It's a nice moment. It almost gets a good laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the I think it's the look on the face. Faith is the face. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Just remember on the... Um, that's right. And then off he goes into the harbour, the sun going. We had to shoot this very fast. Didn't yeah, we? We, we didn't have a just big schedule. There. I mean, first of all, the yeah. boat was going to go, I think, after, what, two or three days? We had yeah. to shoot all that. Um, all the stuff on the launch took a day. And, boy, were we hard-pressed on Boy, I remember you getting these guys with the boat going right. Do you remember that? Oh, <laughs> God, don't tell me. <laughs> Try to get that guy's <laughs> yes. cue with his speech. Oh, God, yes, yeah. But, uh, of course, you never see it on the film. You never see the, the problems here. Well, it, 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 it's unconsciously people realize it, don't they? they? Now, interesting, of course, Famke can't whistle like these most These are our two stuntmen. I, I think it was the assistant the editor who put I'm that whistle in the end. Yeah, there's uh, Simon Crane himself. That's the there. stunt on the right. Yes, Simon on the right. Mm. Um, and there she is. We're about to, uh, we're about to complicate the pot a little bit here. There's the helicopter is stolen. There he is. Those two, by the way, those two names happen to be neighbours of mine. I live in the south of France, so those two <laughs> names come from them. And the French dub was so awful, you could hardly hear them. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the helicopter taking off. Now, this is the Tiger helicopter. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah, that was the uh, experimental helicopter that was Aerospecial's German-French a helicopter. There was only one of these that was actually working and was worth about a hundred million dollars. So the idea of getting this for us was quite a major feat. Another one that Tom Pesner managed. We had the helicopter do a complete loop the loop, by the way. No, that's right, it. yeah, which we cut out simply because it seemed to hold up the action. But uh, it's amazing to see it. See now, it done. let's talk about, uh, we'll come to this afterwards, but Derek Medding's model work, that's which right. you see, that is a model. And uh, all, yeah, all the exterior here is a model with a real size um, a foreground that is uh, full sized which and, we'll see a little later yes and once the scene is over actually now you remember the, the my histrionics in this scene oh yeah when but the, by the way you, the got, video. you got the uh, when we just saw that was that the we saw the dog team outside and we saw it inside so yes the, connecting so those getting two. all that up and running getting a panning with this was all the major but the the uh, do you remember trying to get the video to work? I mean, this, this was shot very early on. I think one of the first, the first days in the studio. This was shot. Yeah, because uh, Pierce had hurt his hand, and we had to reschedule everything. So we had this uh, everything without him. We had to shoot. Yeah, amazingly, he cut accidentally. He had sort of grabbed a towel roll, I think, getting out of the bath, and cut his the tendon in his little finger. And now, of course, with the insurance company, that meant that all the action scenes as such would have to be scheduled later so his uh, finger would be better. And hence, all the dialogue scenes were brought forward. This was the first day, I think, in the studio. That's right. Alan Cumming was uh, <laughs> doing his bit. <laughs> doing his bit and trying to get all these damn computers up and, and running. And we just got Isabella, just what, like, uh, just a matter of two months we, before. Yeah, I mean, she is a real find. Um, we had you know. to actually find her in, on a set where she was playing the part of a boy and Well, I think what had happened Sweden, was yeah. Debbie McWilliams, the casting director, had gone to every country in the world yeah. very nearly, hadn't she? And she finally said, the only country in Europe I haven't been to is Sweden. So in desperation, she went to Sweden. And look who she turned up with. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, yeah, she's wonderful. She's Polish and uh, was but raised in Sweden and, and was a pop singer, actually. I think she had a gold record, didn't she? Someone said that not in Sweden, I think it was. Mm -hmm. but um, And really a, a delightful... As a person, way, absolutely yeah, wonderful. Just, Worked very hard and, uh, um, well, you can see how she looks. She looks absolutely fabulous. So uh, uh, she's going to go a long way, I think, this girl. Let me guess. And again, computers, from a director's point of view, are an absolute bloody nightmare because, first of all, they never work properly. And actually, like all films, everyone is in kind of learning process. And, yeah, uh, and we you quickly got this right, didn't we? Do you remember yeah. you dived in and yeah, I mean, got the other people that, in the whole we thing? Had, uh, we were doing this on video, and later in the film when we started, we actually did it on computer resolution, right. which gave us a much better resolution. And uh, when we get to the a lot of it's been situation room, for example, all of that worked like a dream. So mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, it was absolutely terrific. Now you're about to see it's quite interesting. Um, the next scenes, uh, the exterior of this establishment uh, is a real tribute to Derek Meddings. I absolutely. think. I mean, none of this is location. 
No. no. It's all on the back lot? All on the back lot, see. and it's Derek's models. There is no... Um, see. see, this is all model. That's all model yeah, behind. All, it's all in perspective, so those things are nearer than they look, but they're smaller. Now, the helicopter shots that you'll see in a second, uh, mm -hmm. now this is all model. Now, the next wide shot you see, um, which is this one, all model. Mm -hmm. None of that is for real. This is all done near the... All, everything is model. And this was a big wheel they had built. That's right, which we on a <laughs> forklift truck we dropped in front of it. That's model you see there, which is... Yeah. Uh, now we had the full-size one, which... Um, it the, was just a model, wasn't it? The physical working. effects yeah. uh, did a model, but it was a damn good model. It was, um, yeah, the prop worked and everything. Far better one than Air Special <laughs> had, actually, I was saying. That's right. Um, they gave us their mock-up, but it wasn't very convincing. No. This, I think, is a tribute to uh, Peter Lamont. I mean, he really... These are all Russian things. He went to... We brought them back. The art department brought them back yeah. and put the whole kitchen made out of Russian style. And it looks very much like the type of thing you'd find in Russia. Yes, sort of sl slightly sort of, mm. I don't know, bland, sterile and so forth. And he's got the look. Yeah, and very that, well used. You know, yep, and that, that kind of concrete effects and so forth, the very kind of Russian. Yeah, the way he's done this, he made it out of that heavy concrete and everything. It, uh, it's very convincing. Yeah. General, if I'd known, I would have been ready. And uh, now I think in this uh, scene we learn exactly um, uh, to what this man's about and uh, indeed what uh, Famke's about. Now I remember you with this, getting this golden eye to open up. You remember? <laughs> yes, I'll tell you now, 21 <laughs> takes, it see it on my memory. As, and I remember you finally kicking the video monitor wheels of the trolley and Phil Mayhew came over and said, wait, that's my equipment. Go kick something in special effects. They're the ones that you want to get. Well, it's, it's open by hand, this thing. And now, given it's a Bond film, of course, you want the motion to be absolutely perfect. Of course, we finally get it on take 21 or whatever it is. And we pick up the fried egg, I used to call it, right? Which is, of course, the golden eye, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was a complicated shot, by the way, to get that reflection yeah, of him walking it was. across. It was uh, good. This is a shot I always like. It's quite a shock when it uh, happens. Mm -hmm. She shows her well true done. colors, yeah. <laughs> well, you're extremely good at this narrative stuff, all in one shot. You know, yeah. you see the it all happen. It's quick now, this is interesting very, here very about her, her org orgasmic reaction yes. to all. Neither <laughs> of us thought we'd get this through. In fact, we shot a safety of all this, remember? Yeah. Just in case the sense. But his reaction is brilliant. <laughs> it's like, he doesn't. <laughs> it's one thing to blow up the world, it's another to work with this crazy woman, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, remember this business, the laser and all that, but to get, remember the machine broke down that was projecting the map. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Oh, boy, did God. we have a nightmare. They were up all night doing this. That's well, right. I was thinking, are we going to have to walk away from this set? Oh, God. We had However, nothing else did, to go to, but it all worked. And, they all worked, mm -hmm. and, and we didn't be going to film instead of, you yeah. remember we experimented. Mm -hmm. What we did do was that we did experiment with the stuff before we started, so we did have... Yeah, we couldn't use a real video thing. We actually went to film. We took a... And this is all animated on film. That's right. All animated on film, so we could just do it over and over again, and it was... Uh, but the projector broke down. That's right. Oh, and there was only one in England. <laughs> yes. Am I right? Was yes. that the... <laughs> and given we'd already moved everything because of Pierce's fingers, it didn't leave us a hell of a lot to... Um, that didn't leave us uh, no. much to anywhere to go, really. Now, this is all Derek Menning's stuff with the earth turning behind, and he was great at that. He painted mm. all that himself, all the sky on the earth and there. It's all made up of different elements. You know? Yeah. I was talking to Richard Donner about um, his work. You know, of course, he did Superman, and I think he won an Academy Award for it, but uh, uh, he said that he thought Derek was way in above mm. one of the best model makers well, in the world. He said he's really instinctive. Instinctive and practical and very yeah. artistic. Yeah. Remember this? This is right. This is now, the cutouts. Do you want to talk about the cutouts? Well, yeah. they just painted cutouts. <laughs> they just plywood cutouts, those planes. Yeah, marvelous. So, I mean, somebody with. was going to have us go to Russia and shoot it and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, we actually investigated all. that possibility. I know. It was a fortune to do all that. And uh, you'll see when the planes take off, um, again, Derek comes to the fore with that. They're all models. So uh, here she is, right? <laughs> there she is having another orgasm, so off they go. Yeah. Now, this is interesting. This is a line, you know, that never really worked never in terms worked. of nobody laughed at it. It might be the music came in over this top Maybe it is. It's, it's a or corny line. Away, but, maybe, yeah, yeah, it's a I corny line, and normally that kind of corny line and Bond gets a laugh. It didn't. I think she delivers it correctly, yeah. but uh, it never got the laugh, so obviously something didn't work. Now, here again, that's the... In fact, we uh, did a crane on it. Now, this is Derek Muddings again, heading off into the sunset. That's the mo all model, that. 
Here's another jets taking off. That's at Leavesden. That's our little. That's our air tower at the. And those are models studio. again. Yep. Yeah. Three models. models. Here we are at night. Remember, we got in the bus. It was a fortune to get a bus to come by, and they f broke down. And finally, we just shot a bus in the street. That that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which we should have done in the first place. <laughs> now, this is money penny, of course. Uh, the essential thing we we decided was to um, was to, was to uh, keep the characters going from the old uh, Bond. Yeah, but and Samantha Bond here has a real interesting kind of very classy but very sort of interesting dynamic she has in terms of yeah, bond, she has a way she? of dealing with the humor you know yeah you know, giving him as good as he yeah. gives yeah what would I ever do without you? which is generally a theme throughout the movie the women mm. do give him a pretty tough time throughout it and uh, it was one of the things that we talked about you know when we were discussing the script and I think uh, it was one of the things that uh, you and I wanted was to make the women a little tougher a little more independent um, a little more aggressive and uh, you know in all departments and of course um, I think that comes through in the film now this all this computer stuff again was this was actually computer this time not video mm -hmm. we'd learned our lesson by this right. uh, particular scene yeah this was a several there's nine videos there are 12 videos and ago. by the way that building you saw establishing this place um, was the real MI6 mm -hmm. in London the real building and here we are uh, establishing the helicopter and so forth, which is there. And of course the video, uh, the... And here she is, Judy Dench. You know, and that this is what really made, that was the idea. Uh, Bruce said that uh, you said to him, why don't you try him as a woman, try that out. And he did, and it really, yeah, it worked on paper, but I still was somewhat dubious. And But Barbara, well, both, but... Barbara found Judy Dench and... You know, we, you know, and and when that when she brought her in, uh, and I, I began to see it all come together. Yeah, well, actually, I, th I think John Kelly at UA said something about we would decided on a woman, and uh, although you need a little bit of convincing because it was stepping outside of you know what had gone before, um, it was a kind of brave decision, I think. But uh, I remember John Kelly saying, well, if you do get a woman, get a star, get someone who's terrific, and uh, I think it was Barbara's idea to get Judy Dench. And yeah, I think she's fantastic, and. Uh, this is a relationship that in future bonds, of course, has a ways to go, I think, which is, yeah. uh, you know, it's got um, somewhere to go, which will be uh, good. Now, this is computers and models and things, that one. This is... Uh, I always thought um, Isabella looked... It looked slightly strange in the shot when she comes. It sort of looked like Isabella <laughs> for some reason. I don't know, it's the trick of the camera. This one that took a while, a while all that yeah. digital stuff. Yeah. Now we're getting a lot of the digital work we do in the film, which was... Yeah. Um, now, the, the stuff coming up with the weapon firing, that took an awful lot of uh, to decide on how many in terms yeah. of the electrics. We all contributed mm. to this, I have to say. Everyone had an opinion, and uh, it was our biggest worry, do you remember? Right. It was, you know, it has to be an atomic explosion outside the atmosphere, so... And to be convincing about it, and yet let everybody see... The, kind of see this yeah. effect and see it in a way that they kind of understand what happens. And then remember this, it was all over, you think it's over and suddenly, suddenly the electrical starts, stuff yeah. starts. I suppose the, mm. finally of course, to keep these things simple as the thing. Now here's interesting, obviously yeah. this is all that's digital. Her. That's her. That's her, yeah. Isabella, that's absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that's the that was this double going over. But all that stuff towards camera's her. Yeah, and we blew the place up like this of course and the uh, electrical effects were added afterwards. And very good electrical effects they are too. But hell, do you remember that day? Mm. I love directing explosions because you get five cameras, you point it at them, and you say, fire. <laughs> you you undercrank every camera, and I'm sorry, you overcrank every camera, and it's all over in about a second and a half. That's you hope I love it, it works. It. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, by the way, for the airline version, got cut out. Interestingly, anything to do with explosions. They didn't want to know about planes. planes. They don't want the planes. So if you see the airline <laughs> version, well, you know. Remember that? You wanted that to be like the farm... farm uh, the Hill uh, aircraft explosion where the two of them hit oh, yes, together yeah. and then like, they like fell out. Then, where the Russian plane blew up for real. Yeah. yeah, and it was just after they hit, then they, uh, a few seconds later they blew up. That's right, rather than just the conventional sort of yeah. moment of impact type explosion. Here again, here she is, she trips up. That's right, the steam pipes force yeah, her out. And, and this, this is our stunt girl. Ay, ay, ay. I, <laughs> my heart <laughs> went out to her with this one. Ay, oh ay. my God. <laughs> it's terrifying, isn't it? Uh. God dear, oh dear. Again, Derek, of course, you can see there doing this great work. 
Now, this is a scene um, I like. I think uh, Isabella's particularly good in it. But uh, the effect that's about to happen to come up. Do you remember? We were all mm -hmm. there was a there was no take two on this. It either worked no. the first time or we well, I don't know what we would have done. But uh, above the set, they had built in this thing from the very beginning. So weeks before, before, it was before like we a sort of Damocles ho hovering over the whole set. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always, I was hoping it wasn't going to come through before we oh, needed my. it. And we had to put uh, Isabella in the scene, as you'll That's see right. in the shot. You know, it's the, uh, and of course it's based around the idea. You hear these creaking noises, but uh, you know, it's the old story. It's like the shark seeing the sh mm. the man's head and jaws. Really, you um, you let the audience relax, then you hit them right in the mouth. That's mm. the sort of concept, but. Uh, but it was a hell of an effect, and it did work extremely well, I think, the first time. I mean, Terry's cut the hell out of it, you know. I think it falls about seven times, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes a long time yeah, to get down. Yeah. Now we there the she is. Here we go. There she is, actually standing there when it happened. Yeah. And your heart's in your mouth for all that stuff. That shot was always odd, right? Yeah, well, it's odd because her hair looks odd. That's yeah. the point, I think. She always looks really... Uh, she always, I said, well, she looks like the Mad Witch from... I remember you had a lot of trouble getting that uh, camera. It was a crane camera. It was an 11 down. or 12 shot. The operator had a, um, had a lot of difficulty doing it. And it was a very tricky shot for him, mm. actually, to be honest. It was very tricky. Craning down and panning up at that speed. Now, this is great here. This yeah. is all we shot for real. Now, the next shot you see is, in fact, Derek Mettings, a yeah. double. And that's all to Those do with are, digital yeah. effects and... and uh, great shot. Michael power. Kitchen's always good, isn't he? So I mean, he was good for this part. Well, it's interesting that, you know, it's a very dry part as written, I think. There's always the technician that knows it all and has to tell the audience what's going on or at least, um, you know, offer up uh, what's going on. And uh, Michael Kitchen's an actor who I think brings a much, um, you know, adds a whole lot more to a scene just by being such a fine actor. Mm. One single electric light on a 30-mile radius. EMP. Here he is. Now, um, Judy Dench's character M starts to come out in this. Again, I think Peter did a great job on the design mm -hmm. here. It all fits that building, I think, beautifully. And uh, her office, I think, is absolutely perfect as well. This, by, by the way, for those that don't know in America, uh, Dame Judy Dench is probably... Uh, England's best actress, I think, in terms of... She does a lot of theatre at the Royal Shakespeare Company, the National Theatre. Yes. I just saw her in a little light music before I, oh, before she I came here. Excellent, yeah. excellent. She's just wonderful. She is a wonderful actress. She got two awards this year. For I'm very nervous, by the way, about doing this scene. It was interesting. We were very nervous about even asking her to do the scene, if you remember, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, my God, Dame Judi Dench. And she said she was terrified about... <laughs> doing it because it was Bond. So it, yeah. was a, it was a very funny thing, and she admitted it to me when we were actually shooting the scene. Her daughter was on set all the time we were shooting as well. Flinty, who was uh, This is watching. this uh, infrared uh, effect, which is, I think, very convincing. Yes, right? so do I. I think it's really good. I think people would be amazed as to how... And that, I think, is the effect supervisor with a sheet over his head. Mm. Uh, I think that's how they did that. But... Uh, wasn't it Mara? Was it Mara? It was Mara. Yeah, it was uh, I mean, Mara the, I Bryant, the our, you know, yeah, the visual effects supervisor. Liza, who, that's it. Who, who was uh, coordinated all of the uh, digital effects uh, shots. We were very lucky to get Chris Corbolt, the who was doing the practical and pyrotechnic effects. Mm. He was um, he was assistant to John for um, yeah. for many years doing the Bond films, and this is his first. Um, this is his first job. This became a, a, a wonderful a, a, scene, a, a terrific scene, didn't it? A much talked about scene. Yeah, the, the often quoted the um, misogynist dinosaur. Line. Yes, that seems to be probably the most quoted line in the film, and, uh, um, and he plays it just right. He has a nice sense of um, he keeps his cool in this. Yeah, but she. The great thing about her is that she, she you know, and there's a marvelous reaction at the end of the scene, which, mm -hmm. you know, she's she's very tough in the scene. She lays it on the line. She doesn't pull her punches. On the other hand, at the end of the scene, you realize, of course, that she does feel for him and understands just how difficult and how dangerous the job he's got to do is. So. Mm -hmm. But she's no nonsense. And she's, yes. Mm. And it's based on but not the, hard. I don't it's think it's based on Stella Remington, who was actually the head of MI. Is she still the head six, of MI6? When, when no, when this was, she's resigned. Oh, she's three resigned, years she? during the time we filmed it. She was there. Yeah. 
And, uh, and so this was really uh, uh, in keeping with the reality of who was boss. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and he's got the right sense of you get a real sense that these two are at loggerheads with one another and that, uh, you know, there's a real kind of tension in the air between them. And the great thing about this scene was I think it answers, you know, we had a lot of uh, what I think is negative press in England about, well, is Bond washed up? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, is it something that we should never have started and so on and so forth? And in a funny way, this scene sort of answered it for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone else addressed them as a, as, as a uh, sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Well, we faced the fact that the Cold War was over and that the uh, Berlin Wall was down. We faced that straight on and said, okay, what's going to happen afterwards? Yeah. What's Russia like? What is the world like? Absolutely. I want you to find Goldeneye. Find yes, now we're just coming up to that uh, reaction I was talking about. She told him to go out and do it. A very strong uh, performance. See how still she is. I mean, they both are actually. Stillness is a very powerful element on screen. One thing you'll notice with British actors is they don't wave their hands around like American actors tend to all the time. Yeah. Now just watch this reaction. She goes and just that look down. Do you see, mm -hmm. it says it all. Ah, yes. Here we are in uh, St. Petersburg, looking at the uh, the, win the Winter Palace there. The and that was Hermitage. a band that we, of course, hired and so forth. And were you there? Did you go out with, or was this no, Barbara? I I, Barbara did uh, all that uh, stuff on the second unit there. This, of course, is shot in London, this mm -hmm. particular This is run. the Draper's Hall. Now, of course, <laughs> um, for those that are interested, one of the extras here, the, probably the one you'll see overacting wildly, is, in fact, our producer, the one talking to you now. So I should point <laughs> him out. And uh... <laughs> Well, you gave me a couple of close-ups, I yeah. know. Isn't it? <laughs> well, I had to. I mean, it was political. <laughs> God help me if you'd seen Russia's the next day and I hadn't given you that. <laughs> it's a scene I like this very much. Er indeed. Ormoff. Uh, uh, Mishkin. Yeah. He's, and uh, Ormoff's very good here. And this is, of course, the first time you see um, Carrie Cechi, um Chicky Carrier, yeah. Chicky Carrier, who's uh, a wonderful French actor. Yes, he, and uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. He, um, I think La Balance he was in, which I, there's Michael on the left, you can see. Um, very good actor. Oddly enough, the French have more difficulty with the Russian accent simply to overcome the French accent. It's very difficult. But he did a great job, and it's a scene I like enormously. Very well played by everybody. Lovely location in the centre of the city of London. That's the financial area in London. Um, yeah, I like uh, his reaction when he says, right here, when he says, what are this? Oh, he's, uh, and what about the other two, mm -hmm. he says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now the plot thickens. And it's great getting these uh, actors from Europe instead of the, you know, the, the actors that we've seen many times before. These are new and different and, you know, known on the continent, of course. But um, And also they, they have some significance in each one of their territories. That's which true. Which is nice. You know, they, they come and they support the picture. Very much. And good editing by Terry Rawlings here as well. I mean, he has a real instinct, Terry, for this stuff. Cuts very fast. I'd shoot a scene one night. I'd look at the dailies, sorry, uh, on one particular night. The next night the whole scene was cutting together. Ah, yes. Now here we have the... Uh, one of the oldest uh, <laughs> characters in the film and also one of the longest running characters, Mike. Everybody yeah. loves Q. He is our ambassador of goodwill. Everywhere we go, uh, he's there to promote the film and show his gadgets. He's got a lot of the original gadgets, you know. He, yeah. he goes around with them, the original briefcase and all that. And actually one of the um, great things is, of course, that uh, when you come to write a scene like this, everybody's got ideas as to what the gags are. And in fact, I think the first gag that we have, which is in the telephone booth, which is uh, you'll see very shortly. I think that was thought up by Chris Corbold and special effects. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to kind of contribute to the gags for this um, thing. He's what, 80 years old now? Oh yes, very, very close to it. Uh, needs a little help with the cue cards occasionally, but... Uh... <laughs> yes, yes, I know that. <laughs> I know that. He's also hopeless at gadgets. I mean, you're probably in the press uh, read about that, but he genuinely is. I mean, he's quite clumsy and he's the first to admit it, actually. Claims to be all thumbs. All thumbs. He's well. He's absolutely right. Of course, he's all thumbs. But it's uh, it's a scene I really enjoyed doing, and it was interesting also that the uh, everyone forgot about Pierce, and most of the crew rushed to have their photograph taken with um, Desmond during this. 
Here we are. Here's the telephone. Yes, this is the telephone gag. I think that uh, Chris Bobo didn't fold up. You know, it, it, this this scene tends to build from one thing to another, and it's uh, they're all slightly thrown away, so they're not. You don't have to dwell upon them, so they kind of has yeah. a nice breezy feel about it. Yeah, and it it's uh, it's the scene I always used to look forward to most when uh, Bond films was the Q scene. He really established a kind of uh, uh, terrific following. With the character that um, you know he became. Well, he's always he's always gives Bond a difficult time. <laughs> yes, he doesn't like Bond at all. No respect. <laughs> no respect. That always got a big laugh. The guy being wheeled out just to throw a um, gag in the background. I think he blew more things up in this movie than uh, any previous Bond movie. Everything seems to end up in uh, flames and rubble. There goes the girl waiting there in the background patiently. <laughs> actually, it's interesting, funny gag though it was, of course, that um, she actually injured herself on that take. That was take three, and uh, uh, although not really badly, it certainly hurt, and uh, she was bandaged, I think, for uh, two or three days. This is all done out at the horse? Out, uh, the horse yes, this is all done at uh, Ascot Races, um, and uh, it's done out at the new... Um, it's done out at the new, uh, the stands, the new um, building that they've built out there. And uh, we converted this to uh, St. Petersburg Airport, put, yeah. put, put up the signage and so forth. And to get the three-dimensionality in the set, all the reverses are done a little farther along, down the way. It's, yes. Because it has no reverse here at all. There is no reverse. There's just the building. Just a lot of... Absolutely right. And, of course, we introduced Joe Don Baker. Well, he's one of the few characters, of course, that's been in the previous Bond film, I think, playing a villain, wasn't he? That's right. He was in um, uh, The Living Daylights. He was the the villain in that one. Yeah, well, of course, well, he... That had happened with Charles Gray, of course. He'd, he'd appeared as a our man in uh, in Japan and then appeared as in Diamonds Are Forever as Blofeld, so... There is, <laughs> it does happen occasionally in the Bond film. But also he's kind of, I suppose he re replaces the Felix Leiter character in a way. You know, yeah. it's, uh, this is what he is, he's the CIA contact and uh, he looks very seedy and kind of uh, down at heel and so forth. But um, it's, very, it's very funny and uh, Joe himself actually is uh, extremely good at comedy and so forth. I mean, given that all his earlier roles, like um, Walking Tall and so forth, he was playing a very tough, kind of hard character. I think uh, it's a kind of revelation to just what a good actor he is. Well, you, you had him too in your uh, miniseries. In my miniseries, Edge of Darkness, yeah. And again, he, he played excellent a there. humorous role in that, yeah. Here's Isabella down there. This was done in, uh, at Pancras Station. It's in Pan Pancras Station in London, yeah. And this again was... Um, the Courtauld Institute. We use that in Again London. in London, and uh, the reason, of course, was that uh, in St. Petersburg, we felt that, you know, apart from um, number crunching time, in, in terms of the budget, the other reason simply was the damage or the problems that we might encounter in St. Petersburg yeah, in terms was, of the uh, bureaucracy and so forth. Yeah, and it was also the danger. I mean, everyone who went there, Barber took this whole second unit there, to do the tank chase stuff and, and some of the establishing shots, everyone had to have a bodyguard with them all the time. It was high risk for us to go there. Yes, and it's interesting also, of course, that uh, uh, the upcoming tank chase, which is uh, a little bit into the future, but when that happens, of course, uh, we'll discuss it more at the time. It was originally all set in St. Petersburg, and most of it we shot back at the lot for the same reason we did this. Valentin Dmitrovich Sokoski? Yeah. Anyway, the second unit shot all of the, um, you know, all of the stuff actually shot in mm -hmm. St. Petersburg, and we slotted in. This was on our, down here in our set, and back at the... Yes, again, Peter Lamont built a terrific set for St. Petersburg, the long street um, of which you just saw a, a small section of there. And we had the wider shots of St. Petersburg, which you'll see a little later on, but uh, that was all done by the second unit, and we slotted all this in. Yeah, it was uh, 560 feet long, that stream. That's right, incredible. In fact, we could never have uh, done without it, to be honest, and it probably would have cost us ten times as much had we shot it in uh, some pieces. And we never were quite sure about the political stability and uh, what cooperation we were going to get or not get when we actually got there. Yes, I, th I think in retrospect it was the, the single best decision we ever took was probably that, I think. Here we are back on the computer mm. screens. 
Yeah, now we're getting into uh, computer screens that we're using actual one. I think in the final yeah. cut, this was one of the sections of uh, in the middle of the movie um, that we did quite a lot of tightening. Yeah, we tightened this up. We had an extra scene in here, which we that's right. And the the, um, uh, the what we felt was that the narrative seemed to be going on too long, seemed to hold things up. So this, um, I remember the first cut being like about a hundred and. I don't know, 41 minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we took 12 minutes out anyway from the from that cut. Um, we previewed it, took 12 minutes out, and, uh, and that was the final length of the film. This is St. Petersburg, yeah, obviously. And remember this narrative, this uh, voiceover, we had uh, Bruce come back and write because we did cut some stuff out and I was going to tighten it up. By That's by correct, yes. By linking it with that, uh, this voiceover. Exactly, and the thing was to simplify um, uh, Bond's... The, the way in which he extracts himself from um, Valentine Valentine's clutches in the next scene. There. Are you sure you want to do this? Last guy who dropped in uninvited went home air freight in very small boxes. Yeah, we uh, we had a lot of fun with the writers on this one. Bruce Fierstein was the last one we had, and they were uh, all great. You know the. Uh... Yes, it was a long process, but like most films, I think. Uh, in, in all, there were four, weren't there? Yeah. The four My, Michael France came in with a with a good a story and screenplay, and um, it, from there uh, we had Jeffrey Kane come in. He really sort of pulled it together, and right. basically the uh, the narrative elements in the story were all put in by Jeffrey. And then uh, Kevin Wade was on for a while, and uh, Bruce came in and really spent a lot of time with us, sort of, and you. Uh, well, I think we all, I remember, it was an interesting process because actually after the Michael France draft, I think we sat down for what must have been close on three months, wasn't it? Mm. Or two months, certainly, of just um, discussing the plot and, you know, tightening and, it up and, and, and tightening it up and putting together all the, basically coming up with a treatment from which um, Jeffrey could work. In the, uh, and then... Uh, and a lot of these scenes, it's interesting when you see scenes, what, how different writers have uh, sort of put grace notes in and, and worked them Yes, out. absolutely. Wonderful. Now, this is interesting because here we have Robbie Coltrane, who's probably uh, well-known in England as a comedian and also for a series called Cracker, which is a superb series where he plays a prison uh, psychologist. And uh, he's kind of playing a comic straight role here, but uh, he is a terrific actor. And... Uh, he really makes this scene sing. I think Pierce is terrific in this scene as well. We shot this very early on, if you remember. It was mm -hmm. one, again, one of our first scenes that we actually shot. And this is Minnie Driver. She uh, ha has a nice career going for herself. Now, yes, she's very said. funny. And, and, uh, yes. Robbie is wonderful, though. He has an ability to be humorous and menacing at the same time, and it's just perfect for a, this type of a villain. Yeah, no, he's absolutely terrific. And and uh, if you see Cracker, the series he does, he's won, I think, the BAFTA Award, that's the English uh, equivalent of the Academy Award, um, three years in a row for that series. But uh, this terrible rendition of that song. <laughs> yeah, we had to get a good singer. Remember, you said, we've got to get a good singer who can knows how to sing badly. Yeah, you no point in getting just someone to sing badly because it just won't work. Yeah. And, and Minnie Driver is actually a very good singer. <laughs> she is a good singer. And you remember we recorded this? Yeah. Were you there at the recording? Yes, I, I remember. Was. Oh, yeah. yeah, we were. At, it was at uh, the Snake Ranch. That's the, right, in uh, Chelsea in London. In Chelsea. And uh, we had varying degrees of badness, if you remember. <laughs> we thought, oh my God, that's too bad. To... But actually, um, it's a terrible version of it. And... Uh, but it's the whole idea of what would happen in Russia, you know, imitating Western ideas and having CD clubs. It's yes. the way the new Russia is. That's when you go over there, of course. Was there. One of the unfortunate things was we had to cut a little bit of, there's an earlier scene than this, wasn't there, about what sets Robbie up as an arms dealer, or Valentine up as an arms dealer, which was a terrific scene in itself. But with the restructuring of the center of the movie, it just tended to hold the movie, you know, and I think it was the right decision. I think yeah. It feels right to me. It, so why did you not? Pierce uh, holds his own, though. He was uh, in this scene because it's it's. I think he was uh, he was pleased that we had a lot of solid actors that he could play against, and it uh, it enhances him. It, it him certainly somehow. enhances him, and I think the you know being very early on in the schedule, I think he was um, 
you know, very, he was very nervous about this. And I remember, I remember you standing next to me and we're at the monitor and I was doing a lot of takes on this to get the performance because he was nervous, he was uh, edgy about, you know, he was obviously worried about, like most actors, when he's taking over a role like this of actually doing it properly. He's a very conscientious actor. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I think coming up here is one of the best delivered lines he has where he says, uh, not our finest hour. Yes, you know, I, which is great. He really played it perfectly. Yes. He certainly knows how to um, make an entrance. And if you notice, he, he turns his head for the line, so he just strengthens it a touch when he, uh, when he says it. Also, Robbie, on these big kind of uh, expository speeches about the Yalta Agreement and how the British betrayed, he does it brilliantly. He it's a mouthful, but he, he manages to make it, it interesting. very far. Yes, he makes it interesting, and he, gets, he paces that, uh, those speeches through, and I think that's important. Um, and so uh, it certainly keeps the interest up. But uh, pacing a scene is very important like this to make sure that the the, the scene is not too slow. Yeah. I think contrary to what um, people tell you, I don't think you can actually speed a scene like up this like this up in editing. It just no, it doesn't work. It's got to be in the playing of the playing of the scene. And I'll often time scenes very carefully, and then I'll always look to my script girl and say, you know what. Um, what was the length of that scene? And if we're running two or three seconds slow, then I'll pick that pace up when we do the next take. Now, this is a nice Peter Lamont set. This yeah. one was great. Yeah, beautiful set. It's all built out, 360 degrees, big pool up on rostrums. Uh, all all the uh, detailing was taken off uh, an actual um, uh, uh, Turkish bath in, in Russia. Of course, the tragedy was we were desperately looking for another scene to play in it, if you remember, <laughs> because it was such a nice set and all this effort and work. And uh, all I could feel was that, uh, my God, here's this wonderful set. Can we? Is there any other scene we can play in? Unfortunately, of course, there wasn't. So, but th this scene does have its. It's a nice mixture of uh, humor, sex, and danger, and and that's that's kind of the. Yes, the, I I feel that this is a scene that really turned out. Um, you know, seemed to work. We always had a problem about how well dressed or undressed they yes. be. <laughs> And how are we going to avoid the censorship problems? And uh, it's a scene that I certainly expected uh, trouble with. And I don't think a censor anywhere, no. um, maybe in the Middle East, or I, yeah, I don't know. Pro but probably in Kuala always, Lumpur. I'm, where I'm they sure they're going to cut it and so <laughs> forth. But the truth is that uh, I think we got the mixture right here. And actually, it's interesting that there are a couple of shots here where, in fact, uh, we use Bond's double and Famke's double. Um, I think there's one coming up, the wide shot, uh, in a second, you'll see it. Yeah, she, they're both doubles here to do this. But here's yeah, there's now, yeah. that's, they're both doubled there. Now we're back to the original pair. That's uh, Famker and uh, Pierce, right? And uh, here we go again. This is doubles, both cases. Up, watch the way she pulls them. Whoa. Yeah, now, they're back I, to the original. I know back. people who pay money to have their legs wrapped <laughs> round like that. But I it think was that was uh, there was a lot of uh, secret desires to, uh, yeah. and actually she hurt her back on this, you know she she yeah. she, well, she even was she padded had... up, but she still got thrown around a lot. And the we... other the other thing, if you remember, was Peter put rubber tiles on the wall. All That's of right. those walls are made of rubber, mm -hmm. so it'll it'll take the bashing it does. Yeah, I was we asked him to do that, you know, and. Uh, I like the way she pops up. Not hurt at all, just yes. mad. <laughs> and Bond, of course, not a hair out of place. People love this. this one. Yes. Now, this is great. This was, a, remember, Michael France actually had said he went to a place like this when he went to Russia that had all the uh, statues that yeah. would discard an old air base. And uh, it was the inspiration for this scene, which is... Oh. Yeah. Now, interestingly, in this scene, of course, there's a rabbit punch coming up, which we couldn't show the rabbit punch because the British censor objected and it wasn't worth doing two versions um, for England and America. But uh, ironically, I think it's almost just as vicious off screen as it is on, but that's censorship for you. So, yeah, we had to actually go out and spend a day shooting that, yep, I remember that. little insert. Actually, the same day we did the gun barrel again, mm -hmm. if you remember. So it did. But I think this is a wonderful job by Peter Lamont. Here we have the far better, of course, than the one in Russia. But uh, this eerie kind of quality to the scene, brilliantly lit, I think, by Phil Mayhew. Yeah, Phil did a great job here because he got that sort of t not only the lighting but the moisture on it to feel mm. the kind of dampness, some mist across here. It's, it and nice and, and one of the interesting things, of course, is that in daylight it looks nothing. <laughs> and yet by the time the lights are on and the, you've got all the shapes and the light and, and uh, 
it looks absolutely tremendous. And of course, you obviously move things about uh, for every setup, which we did. You move the statues, you get, you find your frames, and I think it looks absolutely fabulous. And it's a scene that really remained right back from the Michael France days, didn't it? Yeah. The principle of the scene remained, uh, even though the dialogue was changed. And uh, yeah, all the all the writers took a crack at this. It was a a tough scene to get right. Yeah. Uh, the sense of it came with uh, with Jeffrey and Bruce. Uh, you know, Bruce contributed a lot in tweaking it. Yeah, and, that's yeah. true. Hello, James. But it was. Uh, it's a great entrance here. Yes. Here. Well, it's straight out of Trevelyan, the third. You know. I think Phil Mayhew, the DP, based it on the third man. He used to remember with uh, mm -hmm. Orson Welles coming out of the, I think the doorway, wasn't it? And yeah. you know, the third man, and the light actually hits him. But it's a great place to play a scene. I mean, look at it. I always like the wide shots. They're the ones that uh, I think are terrific. They're really, um, really good. An and uh, Pierce really came came to this. Pretty much by himself, didn't he? Kind of his interpretation here. It's very good. He does it. I think there's a lot of feeling from him, actually, in the scene. You know, the sense of betrayal, the sense of disbelief and so forth. I think he plays um, extremely well. He gets, uh, you know, he has to react pretty much in this scene. He doesn't have a lot to say, but uh, but it's his reactions are crucial to... Uh, to to making you understand how Bond's feeling about this situation. Yes, actually, one of the funny things about the statue park, I remember on the day before shooting, one of those giant statues got stolen. Do you remember? I remember. <laughs> we always like wanted... 20 foot high or yeah, something. Yeah, how did someone get it out past the security guard? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, even if they threw it over the wall, what the hell did they put, put it in? A Pentechnican or, I mean, a giant, uh, you know, a huge truck? What? And we had a lot of people objecting, if you remember, around the uh, neighborhood. So we sent people out during the day. They curtained off their windows at night. They put up little sound buffers. It was uh, to because people complain about the bright lights. Uh, That's night. right. Oh God, there was a lot of complaints. Also, if you listen closely on the soundtrack, you'll probably hear birds twittering in the background. Well, of course, the, they were for real. I remember at two in the morning hearing this bird chorus. This wasn't a dawn chorus. This was an all night chorus, and uh, um, there was quite an interesting, uh, um, you know, element to the soundtrack. You know, it's interesting. Uh, um, uh, now that I'm, you know, this was when the scar came up. It just reminded me that um, uh, El uh, Linda Devetta was our makeup. A woman on this and and she did a wonderful job of creating the scar and and she made these she made the scar up and then she made a lot of copies of it uh, and she kept right. on putting it on and every day so you have a similar scar and it was uh, it's real artistry to it to get the also the thing was to get the scar so it didn't deform his face too much I remember that we all laughed at the Richter smile description and the knob script. of an ear was also <laughs> described. Yes. We wondered what we were going to see. I mean, but luckily, uh, it never got that. So, so we, that. This is the final result. Yes, now this is interesting. This is the scene where he gets the dart in the neck. Well, Barbara Broccoli, um, who is, of course, co produced mm -hmm. with you, is this, she always hated this dart scene. She always thought the dart was kind of ridiculous, and uh, it was one of her bete noires, mm -hmm. I think, in the, uh, in the movie. But now here's the screen. This poor girl got hoarse here. <laughs> yes, how many times do we do this? My God, she screamed and yelled and stamped and so forth. And uh, um, she came. Her voice was completely wrecked at the end of this. Yeah, this was a this was a scene that was a little tricky. Remember when we we edited the whole thing? Now we put in a couple of extra little effect shots. Yeah, actually, I uh, storyboarded this scene uh, pretty detailed, and what you see is pretty much what the storyboards. Um, pretty much what the storyboard contains. But it's uh, all these missile shots that you're about to see when he realizes, of course, that the missiles uh, are going to launch are all digital, in fact. I mean, one of the great things with digital is you can, the missiles will go exactly where you want them to go and you don't have to worry. So all of that is digital. Now, this, this the sequence here was shot uh, by Arthur Worcester because uh, our, our regular uh, Ian Sharp was out um, in Russia doing stuff. So. And Arthur Worcester had done an awful lot of second unit direction, I think, on the previous Bonds, hadn't he? Yes, he had. He was one of our standbys, so we got, got a chance to get him back, and he did a few of our uh, things. And here again is a combination of models, digital, real, uh, studio, of course. And uh, again, Derek's model, there you see oh, it. Oh boy, did we have problems with the double parachute. Oh. <laughs> I think it was 33 takes in oh, the end. How many times we saw this 
poor, this thing with one parachute open, the other one didn't. Oh Crashing down, yes. No. All night long, these guys would go out. Again, that's model, what you see there, which again is incredible. Now we're back to the real thing. And uh, here we go. So this is the first time the, uh, the Bond and uh, Natalia meet. That's correct. She kicks him in the shins <laughs> and off she the, goes. That's the first meeting there. My only memory of all of this was I, I was feeling as sick as a dog during the shoot. Do you remember it was the oh, night no. I was so ill that I couldn't... Uh, and here we are, these wonderful Russian jeeps that none of them worked. So everyone, I, I think, know. broke down that particular I night. think in we fact, had six, we ended up with four. <laughs> <so. laughs> yes. They collapsed and broke. Now here we are in Russia. This is... Uh, and it cuts it together nicely. And then, you know, the same. It's a, it's a very interesting facade. This is in St. Petersburg, this particular shot. And a uh, very eerie, kind of stark-looking building. And again... Uh, Peter Lamont is his best here. On yeah, Venice. wonderful um, set. This is trying it? to feel like an underground cavern based upon some places we actually visited. Yes, he visited an awful lot of these uh, locations in Russia, and uh, this whole sense of uh, the cell here, I thought, uh, looked marvelous. And it's a very good scene as well. It was, it's a scene between them both that I think it works extremely well. Yeah, and, and um, Isabella really you know, came through here. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you're always a bit nervous when you get someone who doesn't have too much experience, but uh, I remember we read her. I, uh, you were watching. I read the part of Bond when, when we first met her, and it was amazing. She had good eye contact. She Very had, much so, yeah. You know, we, and also it's a scene we test a lot of other actresses on, this one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. This was the sort of key scene because... You know, it's quite an emotional scene for her, and uh, it's quite a difficult scene for uh, for anybody to play. And uh, um, I think we had four or five actresses test for this part, and this was the scene we used. Yeah, there you go. Of course, uh, for a Bond lady, she doesn't have much wardrobe change. She's she went through most of the picture in this. I, yeah, she's yeah, that's that's absolutely right. <laughs> I think it's the first <laughs> time. <laughs> so incredible. So the short skirt, of course, was. Uh, I mean, we've got the beach scene coming up. There's that famous crutch shot that I like so much that Terry Rawlings insisted stayed in the movie, and uh, I backed him up 100%. But beyond that, the um, this outfit, I think, was on, you know, yeah. apart from the Kenzo coat she found and yeah, on that sledge in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, she was on half the picture in this. <laughs> Lovely lighting. I think Phil did a fabulous yes, did job wonderful. I remember talking about it in the day. So, well, I want it to... Dawn's coming up. I want to have low slant lighting in this yep. room. Morning, Very chiaroscuto. It's great. Now, this is a, a terrific scene. I think yes. there's... It's a good scene because it's nice to see Bond get riled up. These two start arguing, and she interrupts all of this and uh, and tells them what she thinks of them. And I think it's a, it's a scene I really like. Yeah, and then when... Um, uh, Ormoff comes in, it, uh, it really picks up the yeah. way he and Mishkin go at it. It's great. We're about to sort of enter a um, very heavy action sequence that kind of uh, probably the biggest or certainly the longest action sequence, I think, uh, and the, uh, in the movie. I think. In the archives, remember this, this was in a Michael France draft. It got dropped out at one time and finally... I think yeah, it was you that said it should stay in, actually. Yeah, I, I remember even I, myself was saying, well, you know, do we need this? I mean, does it have to be in this? And I remember you saying, yep, I think it's a, it's a well, really good scene, and it proves to be a terrific scene, actually. I think the, yeah, the idea that they're on top and you can fire through the uh, walkways and all that is uh, kind of an interesting idea. Well, and the, uh, as written, of course, it was a lucite floor, right. wasn't it? It's and supposed uh, to be plastic and then fall through. And the complications were so great, but actually I think what we, what we finally get in the film is just as good. It also is a very good. Uh, it's a very good piece because now we really see Pierce in action, probably for the first time. And any apart from the opening sequence, he really comes into his own. Very, very good at action. And uh, you know, a, an action hero running around in a suit and tie, not something you see very often. No, no, he handles himself extremely well. The point is that a lot of actors are not great at action. They're not. Um, some actors that physically look very strong are often actually not that. Um, capable when it comes to doing action. Yes, and it happens in a few seconds, I think. Yeah. There's always a question here, did he get all the bullets out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That was, laughs> I remember you worrying about that, yeah. That's right. And now, of course, mm -hmm. this is Bond being uh, Bond. Here we go. Yeah. And of course, yeah, multitudinous is, soldiers come well, charging. Well choreographed. Yeah. 
Simon is, Crane has done uh, doing a great job here. I think I certainly think he's one of the best stunt arrangers in uh, England, no question, if not the best. Does a lot of the stunts himself as well. Touch of Sam Peckinpah mm -hmm. there about all this. Notice there are no bullet hits on anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, particularly in terms of censorship, while there's a high body count, mm -hmm. uh, blood is not something that um, yeah. that. that, that uh, no raw liver at the camera. Line. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think we barely put blood on anybody in the whole movie, quite deliberately, because uh, the censors um, object to it. And uh, I think we would have been in serious trouble if we'd put. I don't remember actually wiring anybody up for a bullet hit in the movie. We, I simply left it to the stuntmen to uh, give the whole sense of, you know, in their action and so forth, to sell that to me. This is a great complex. That was the end of uh, Peter Street down there, isn't it? Down That's down right. The now, interestingly, what you see here is, was actually in the building, or a lot of it was in the building, that uh, a real part of the building, wasn't mm -hmm. it? These and files. you see, and all those tanks up there, we ended up uh, lending to Richard the Third. They're part of the uh, the uh, Richard United III movie. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's right. And uh, we got them uh, to uh, we got them uh, free of charge, so we can just uh, of pretty course, low budget. This is very interesting because it's how to escape 10 million bullets and, you know, <laughs> as only Bond can do and not put a hair out of place. And all the paper flying yeah, That so was something. Wasn't yeah, it? that was... I think it was £10,000 worth of... in that one... what that little sequence is just in the bullet hits alone, all the paper exploding and, uh, and so forth. I think it was like £10,000 just, just for those hits. Yeah, it's a very exciting sequence. It was a complicated sequence to do, but it, but it's, it turned out extremely well. Here we see the Q's belt in action. I love those sort of Errol Flynn things. Round they go through the roof. And that was Simon Crane himself actually doing that stuff. That's right. And then this is the Pierce, though. He, That's he Pierce, did a pretty good jump yeah. out there and running around here. And He's also very... Um, he is very active, isn't he? He's very active, and he also is, punishes himself. By that, he wants to get it right and... Uh, you know, if you say, do it again, that's not good enough to him. He'll respond to that. You know, I could show him on the video, and he would go back and do it again. I don't ever remember him once, or perhaps there's one point in the story later on, which I'll uh, point out, where he, <laughs> he got really fed up. But beyond that, now, I don't blame him, actually. He had, to, he had for a good cause to be. Now we're coming up with this shot. If you remember... Oh, my God. We had that tank took an hour, uh, took one mile to get up to speed on that airport we were at. Yeah, it, and you'd listen to it coming for a minute and a half and wonder if, the, if the car and the tank were going to be in the shot at the same time. Had to well, be time perfect. Absolutely, and they would come and we'd all be waiting tensely and everyone would be silent, we'd hear the rumbling get closer and closer and of course uh, suddenly Simon would yell cut because it was half a second out. I mean if it hit that car then people oh, would be dead. And yeah. so it too had too to early be. and it was a danger, too yep. late and it was out of frame. It was a really a Perfect job. I think we'd had five run-ups before we finally did it because we could only do it once. Yeah. Now this is a great uh, between the the street we had and St. Petersburg and well, it's faultless really in terms of you, you simply can't tell. But I mean, uh, I think Barbara was down there two weeks with the crew. That's right. And Sharp and, and, and the people and. Uh, and quite clearly really, what you're about to see, this business with the canals, which will <laughs> happen after the sequence, that is all shot in St. Petersburg. I know, and that was a rough street. That that street had on the Japanese embassy, the French embassy, the Pushkin Museum, the mayor's house, and uh, how they let us, uh, well, of course, they did object, but it's amazing we were able to, to shoot on this street. I know, incredible. And it's a lovely stunt coming up, I thought. Uh, Simon did a fantastic job with this. I mean, I certainly would have liked to have done it. <laughs> when that one hits that one, the whole thing blows up. I mean, it's... Yeah, they're, uh, they're good. Well, the Russians have great stunt fellows. I mean, they're, all these guys here are, are stuntmen when they hit them on the bridge. Oh, that's right. Yes, they're, yeah, all, they're all Russian. They're yeah, all guys. Russian. They're yeah. great. I mean, uh, but also, the, I think the technical people involved in the picture, the people who organized the locations, I thought were pretty terrific, weren't they? Oh, yeah, I mean, we had good Russian uh, support out there. We had Phil Kohler out there, who's been on all the tough locations for us over the years. Well, he's, he's the British location manager. Right, and, and, uh, and so it... Uh, and negotiation was a long process, and obviously there was a hell of a lot of red tape to get through. Um, and even then, when you got the permission, that didn't guarantee anything, to be honest, no, did it, no. in terms of, I mean, on the day anything could happen, you know. But uh, it turned out wonderfully well. Of course, I don't think we want to 
I think in the retrospect, though, we were happy it was a shorter. We didn't take the whole first unit out there. No, oh, I think it was. It could have been a disaster. Yeah. Yes, there's, a, there's quite a lot of um, mass destruction in this, of course. You know. But no one gets killed. I think that was an important decision to make. <laughs> yes, <No>. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. How I mean, nobody gets killed, of course, is a complete mystery. Well, but you know, it's supposed to be a sort of funny. You know, you're supposed to have fun in the chase. Yeah. And if you see someone actually killed, it, it kind of spoils your yeah. fun. Well, the one I love is the one coming up, I think, where the, the, um, the, the tank just totals, the tank the just totals two police cars. And there's a pause. Right here they are. Here we are. Lot right. It goes two. right over the, this one here. You know, I love this one. This now, one. now watch oh, that. Now watch the next cut. Now they now all they come out. out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it should be. Well, that's life. You know. But uh, yes, I'm in moral. I know. Ian it is saying important. to me, oh, why do you want... I said, come on, Ian. Have the guys get out and see them walk and talk. <laughs> no, I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, it's imperative. Well, this thing here, the Perrier, remember this. All the... Uh... Well, it's interesting that um, uh, it seems seriously like product, product placement. I think we went to Pepsi, we went to Coke, and they wouldn't do it. Um, and Pepsi, of course, uh, offered to do it, so we took them up. Now this is a great. Um, yeah. I just want to say on that the, the problem with it is that you have to get a case of, of empties because you can't do that with real no. full thing. So you really have to have the approval of some organization. So that's why I went to end up with Mary. The great um, special effects. I love this. This statue. was your idea. This whole statue on oh, top. That was the uh, idea. Hitting your the storyboard and everything was, it worked out well. Got a lot of laughs. And yeah. People love it. And uh, right. Very well edited again by Terry. And, and then a the little, the little grace note here at the end of this scene is, is the uh, <laughs> the one that people love the most. Bond straightening his tie. Yes, it's just perfect Bond, really. <laughs> now this was a little bit of a story glitch coming up. I mean, you know, as you'll see, of course, the tank. Uh, Something pulls bridge. up on the bridge above, and you wonder how the hell the tank got there. I think it's legitimate, but on the other hand, you feel well that I th it's something. Well, you, you plant the seed. You get Bond, away. You get away with Bond it. Bond was watching, so Bond is doing something. To yeah. Get it, to so I mean, it. that's it, it's weak, but it's uh, we get away with it. I suppose is the best you can actually say. The bridge, of course, is uh, it's all cheated because there is no bridge above all of uh, ab above the train. This is a location up near Peterborough in England, the old sugar factory. I seem to remember, and this train, of course, is another Peter Lamont special. Well, we took a real locomotive and put all this cladding on. We had steel workers. It's all fully uh, cladded with uh, real iron. Absolutely. Now, this is a great sequence, uh, again with Derek Meddings, where he, after the, the interior of the train, um, where it's a combination of models, the real train, special effects. But uh, the real credit goes to Derek Meddings because... Uh, the train and uh, the perfect gift, you know, what happens at the end of the sequence is uh, all him, really. And, and Famke had a little bit of a concern that she didn't have enough dialogue in the scene, but the way her reactions were done, what you gave her to do as far as reactions, uh, makes dialogue almost irrelevant for her. It's, uh, well, it's interesting. She was I remember she was upset at the time at the scene because here she is um, sitting in the background. Everybody else seems to have the work to do, and, of course... Um, because she had nothing to say, she was upset about it. But I had to convince her, of course, that you know you don't need to say lines to actually be um, uh, to be effective. And uh, after the train crashes, of course, um, I remember she got a laugh just by cutting to her reaction, getting up silently off the floor, and subsequent reactions in the train. That's right. Uh, when she, she says he's going to ram us, him. everybody laughs. I know. <laughs> she, she looks like uh, she's <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, well, of course she is looking forward to it. But it's true. I mean, now here's a model shot. Look. This one of the tank. Um, we weren't allowed to put the real tank in the middle of the railway line. Yeah, but that was a full-size model. Or something. No, no, no. That was the that was the smaller model. That's the full-size one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reverses, but it's all done. Uh, and it's great when even we ourselves don't know what's model and what's mm. real because it's obviously um, this, it, it all works. Here we go. That's our real train, and of course. Uh, now we're on to the model. Bond. Only Bond. Yeah, that's, that's what she got. That was the great laugh. Mm. She got a great laugh on that. Full speed. Here we go. Full speed. Now we're into ver that's all model. That's that's obviously real. Mm. And the studio. And uh, this is all model, what you see from now on. That's, that's a great piece of work. 
even a model Pierce. How's that? No one. <laughs> As I said before, everything in this film seems to explode at the end of the scene, and this is no exception. Very tough scenes to do, actually. I mean, interior scenes. I think the scenes I found the most difficult and frustrating, and the ones I hated most are the ones I hated doing most are the ones in this train. Well, it was a long, narrow set, and there was no. We couldn't fly the walls. Float, uh, it was all locked down because the lights were in and everything. And it, but it's effective. I mean, it's, it, it works extremely well. But I, from a director's point of view, it was very, very frustrating. I think I was in my worst moods during this. I hated, uh, I hated it was actually so small doing to these work things. In, hard to light yeah. and hard to move, and the camera took up so much space. The crew, had you no can, the crew, to kind of half the crew, have got to be outside while this is all set up, and you're treading on each other's toes. They're a nightmare these sets, quite frankly. But the scenes turned out well, and uh, for that I was. Um, I was pleased. It was quite a long shoot in here as well. What you have to do as a director is um, shoot with the lights, uh, is what we call it, which means that you shoot every setup right throughout the scene one way, you then light the other way, and you shoot everything. You progress through the whole scene again and shoot with all the lights in the other direction. So, back where we started, James. Okay, here we are, and there's Oromov, has just come in. Everyone, of course, wearing suits and uh, Oromov in his uh, military splendor and so forth. Which brings me to Lindy Hemmings, of course, who was the um, costume designer. Now, she had done four weddings and a funeral, Mike, before that, yes, hadn't she? Yes, she had. And, oh, had a wonderful CV. And, uh, and I, you know, and, and came right. To, she won an authentic uniform from the Russians. Everything is, is the way they should have been. She went and, and you can't really buy the stuff. You actually have to have most of it made. But uh, nevertheless... Uh, Address the women, I think. And, of course, know. the great thing that we all looked at each other and said, no boiler suits. Do you remember? <laughs> those terrible, well, those orange and orange green jumpsuits. Jumpsuits. In every Bond film, they've got jumpsuits But on. she had a lot of fun with Famke. You know, Famke is nice and tall, has a great figure, and and wore, wear, uh, could wear all these wonderful uh, costumes, sort of. Uh, yes. And she put, she, she put uh, Sean Bean in black all the time, you know, the villain and so forth. So he, uh, he wears black and... Uh, she did a terrific job. I think she's working with Jack Nicholson at the moment doing a uh, film. Oh, fine. Thank you very much. Again, this was a complicated sh scene to shoot given that we had the um, this very tight, uh, very tight set. What are you doing? And again, it's a, uh, there's a lot of humour in this scene as well. I mean, humour and tension. Yeah, it's a chance to get... To, uh, of course, in the plot, you have to, you have to track them to their next position from here using, uh, of course... Uh, Alan uh, Cummings' own computer against him to track him down. So that's right. That's part of the fun of it. Always amazed me that that section of the story worked. I mean, I remember we talked about this in detail. Having set it up at the uh, at the facility in Seven Eye very early on, you know, uh, uh, placing all this mm -hmm. stuff about you know being able to track him and so forth, um, that it actually makes some kind of sense this far down the line. We've got three minutes. And uh, some of this was a model and some was real. Most of it was real. It was amazing that, that they uh, had a real helicopter and the piece of the train they had that they built. And all that. Well, I always think that helicopter always looks like a model to me. And I know, it's real. real people inside. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's the real thing. <laughs> yes, now all this pen flipping is great because poor old Alan Cummings had to kind of twist this pen and make it look as natural as possible. And uh, he rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And it's not easy, you know, to make the point, of course, that... Um, this places the idea that later on in the story when uh, he has that lethal pen that Bond gave Q in his hand, um, he will flick it. He and, fidgets uh, about with it, flicks it, and nobody knows whether it's going to blow up or not. So in a sense, his twiddling the pen now is placing that moment later on in the, uh, later on in the movie. And guess what? Here again, I guess they'll get out in the nick of time and... Of course. And back to Cuba. Just when everybody thought Cuba was a nice place to go, <laughs> Castro goes and shoots down a couple of unarmed planes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And of course, guess what? They escape by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, and this, I think, too. Here is uh, um, Bond and Isa, uh, uh, Pierce and Isabella right there with a big explosion behind yes. them. They were game for that. You know? Yes, yeah. No, they did that very well. Um, and. Uh, 
That was the last of the blowing ups for a while, but there's an awful lot of things went bang. There's a lovely scene. I think there's a great moment between them both here. It's kind of where they get together and romantically or take an interest in each other. And it's, I think it's a very fast-paced film. You know, I think the pace of the film never, never flags. And uh, this is probably just a nice moment to rest up a bit and, you know, mm -hmm. take a breath. And I, it sort of allows this to happen, I think, all this scene. The Caribbean, of course, was uh, that they're talking about uh, for Cuba is Puerto Rico. Yeah, and we went down there and uh, it was one of the first locations we went on together, didn't we? Yes, it was, I think, in the first... Uh, yeah, we did that in January, right? The, uh, it was the, the first, first ten days, wasn't yeah. it? We, we were... We were um, as soon as we Cuba. finished out the sets they built, we went off there and... Uh, now, the interesting thing is that uh, to find a beach that is looks halfway decent in Puerto Rico is almost impossible, if you remember. That's we right. Scarred. And one that doesn't have people. And the reason this one was so nice is that it's blocked off from the roads by a big dump, if you remember the city No, no, dump. this is not the beach. This is not that one. This is another beach, this one, isn't it? No, 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 this, no you're this quite one right. The That's dump. right. Both of them. Well, one was a... This was an official and dump, yes. and the other one was just... <laughs> But that was, that's why it was such a nice piece of land, because yeah. you couldn't get to it. And we had to break the, the beach and get whatever Coke cans and rubbish was, were, were uh, lying there. Now, this is interesting, because the pilot of this uh, plane, who drops it on a sixpence in front of the car, is what, Tom was Tom 70, 73 years old? He was. He was great. Um, and uh, what a pro. I mean, he did this several times. Ten times, I think, he did this, didn't he? He dropped it down, and just about every time he made it, perfect and uh, what a um, you know probably one of the best stunt pilots in the world and he's 73 years old this is of course where we reintroduce uh, Joe, Joe Don Baker I remember this one was a tough one we we ran out of light and we had to come back the morning we left and that's right on Saturday down. morning on it. yeah <laughs> that's right we ran out of light everyone that's had. right and Pierce wasn't there and I had to throw the keys to Joe Don Baker and I missed him about 10 times yeah. before <laughs> he finally got him yeah. in his hat <laughs> And the interesting thing is a lot of questions, remember, uh, now we're talking after the film has come out, of course, is why wasn't the BMW used more? Well, what's interesting was that the BMW deal came in quite late in the story in terms of uh, discussions. We'd already had the script um, pretty much finalized, and so it was a matter of actually dropping it in where you know, where we could, which we did. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't have any, it doesn't use its rockets or anything like yeah. that. A lot of people comment on that, and that really is the reason for it. Joe Don was, uh, he was always trying to figure out how to make this scene interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He, I don't think he ever quite understood the scene. <laughs> you know, um, but also the, the weather was absolutely gorgeous, wasn't it? Oh, we were well, so lucky. Like, really, we fell on our feet here. We, we, the weather was magnificent. Because it was so unpredictable that time of year. Yeah. A beautiful little area as well. Car looks great, of course. Yeah, well, there was only two of these in the world. You know, at the time, there were these were the two prototypes. And uh, if anything happened to them, uh, <laughs> well, BMW would have killed us. Well, know? also, the other thing was they were trying to keep it under wraps and hide it. It was a hoot, of course, because the first thing that came out was a news helicopter. And I think the paper was in the... <laughs> the, the sorry, the picture of the... Uh, BMW was in the next day, wasn't it? I know. Local we, well, paper. they kept it under wraps. They always had undercover on the street, you know, whenever they transported yeah. it. But, of course, uh, the press will always find a way. And they did. Now comes the romantic scene here. It's a scene which we liked. And, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a very interesting scene. It's a very beautiful scene as well. It's, it's, a, it's sort of a departure from, from the Bond types of scenes. There have been romantic scenes, but uh, never quite in this tone. But... Uh, Worked out really well. I had some doubts about it myself, but um. well, actually, Bruce, I, I'll never forget when he was writing this scene. He, uh, the previous version to this, had a hilarious line where he mm -hmm. was quoting from the Ancient Mariner. That's right. right. My ship is so big. Uh, what was this, it? My boat is so small. The ocean is so big. <laughs> my boat. Anyway, he came out and rewrote that. But Barbara was all, you know, very, very much st stuck with him and and got him to. Uh, yeah, and she you did. kept at it too. To to really make this scene work. and uh, Now, this is a scene I rehearsed for two hours the night before with them. I got them into a room, into a hotel room, and we rehearsed for a long time because it was it's a very difficult scene to pull off and make convincing without making it, you know, seem uh, like... Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those two hours really paid off because it, it took half a day to shoot this. We were finished by lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, 
and this was remember the tide was coming in. That's right. <laughs> we kept oh on running God. on a beach here because yeah. we were being backed up against the. Um, How can you be so now the this cliffs. was genuinely the only bit of beach, and the whole I covered in the helicopter when I was doing my uh, location scouting. Mm -hmm. I think I went right round the whole island from top to bottom. I think you probably did at one point as well, looking for oh, lakes. Yeah. Um, and uh, no luck, and so we had to. This was the only bit of beach that uh, would have that was possible to shoot on. Now this was a this was a wonderful thing that you did here because you did this all in one shot. Yeah, the whole scene is played in this one nice shot, and it's a really well. Again, what's interesting if you remember the script called for basically a love scene where they get together in bed and get at it. But uh, I remember thinking about it sort of days before thinking it just simply won't work, you know, that it, it just didn't feel right that, um, you know, he should be uh, going. They should be having sex, thing, yeah. basically. And uh, it, it, it felt awkward to me and it felt, you know, so it, post another film may be better. But, you know. Yeah. And I think I think it turns out much better this way. Much I would have loved to have shoot, shot the scene, of course, but uh, the interesting nice was Isabella of... was all, all ready for it. You know that <laughs> she said to, she was quite angry that she couldn't uh, dive on top of him. I remember she said to me, "Well, I, you know, I was came all prepared. I was all ready, and now we're not doing it." <laughs> but at least it was. It has a nice sense of humor. About oh, it's it. lovely. That's, what, that's what's nice. It's playful and funny, mm. and that's a good thing about it. Now, when we come out of this, this is uh, where was it? The Dominican Republic, was it? Yeah, this was the Dominican Republic. A shot that had a problem steadying. And, That's and, right. We had a lot of digital stuff. In it, uh, they said the rotor was out of balance on the helicopter. It vibrated. And yeah. again, yeah. you know, so we had this juddering effect, which was uh, essentially cured by, um, by digital, which was uh, a terrific asset for us because we certainly could, didn't want to go out there and uh, shoot it or reshoot it. And again, these backgrounds are what you see behind and are then all to cut with this out, yeah. well, they're all Derek's models mm -hmm. to a lot of them, uh, to a large extent. And uh, that's Derek's model. That's there. Derek's model there behind, and uh, all digital, of course. Gone are the days of just back projection. There you have Derek's model again. We couldn't find a lake in Puerto Rico for love nor money, so all of this is uh, Derek's. Yeah, the lake had to be kind of circular, at least. Yeah, but there was nothing that. Uh, except long, thin lakes. Yeah, there was no way we could actually uh, do it for real. And this is a scene which is, um, which I haven't looked at the airline version, but God, it can't make any sense at all because you aren't allowed to see planes being hit or explode or do anything. I so I, I wouldn't even, I don't think I could ever face looking at the scene on the airline because it's gone, mm. basically. How they get into the jungle will always remain a mystery to me. But. Anyway, great, again, Derek, to yeah, the nice floor here. Look at this, look at the shot. There's a model shot thing. there, great there. Now we're in the studio, and so we go on. And a nice cut here from the time he comes out to when he, she's... Yes, a, a, a great time cut. It's one of the things that I think you have to do is to try and assess the pace of a scene, and it's always the thing of getting out of cars, getting out of vehicles can often be time-consuming and slows everything up, so you've got to devise a way in which to move the story on. So there, from there to yeah. there is a nice cut. So it's a, and always a nice sharp sound gets you through on these cuts. In this case, it was him kicking the door. Now the next sequence is interesting. They go down here. All of this is Peter Lamont in the studio, which is um, he did a great job with. But uh, the next sequence where he sees the helicopter again was a slight cheat. Cheat, and of course, uh, you'll be able to recognize from Apocalypse Now. Probably not nearly as good as that, but um, it was that kind of slightly hallucinatory kind of image of um, the helicopter and again with the sound effects and so forth but uh, I remember Martin Sheen lying on the bed and this great image that Coppola had of the the uh, helicopter the stunt girl here coming down she'd just come off Waterworld fed up she'd done months at it nothing appeared to be happening <laughs> I don't know. and she, yeah, she there, were, there were some dangerous moments in this though, yes oh yeah shooting this because of the Stuff falling out of the helicopter. Something fell out of the helicopter and they're shooting up and it just missed everybody. And it's just one of those things you can't protect it. Great scene here between nice the Nice entrance. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and of course, uh, she does it marvelously. God, God, she's, you know, she's violent as hell. I love it. Lindsay Hemmings come with, uh, you know, with this uniform for her. <laughs> yes, anything, kind of militaristic. It all sounds a bit, looks a bit Nazi, of course, and that's exactly that. She looks great. 
And, uh, you know, it's interesting. She's doing a lot of work here and selling it. But I tell you, Pierce is equal. Look at the way he's mm -hmm. selling that, you know. And, of course, actually, he's sitting on something. Yeah, now this headbutt was taken out in England. That's right. Uh, no headbutts. You know, we had a, what, a 12 certificate on that? Mm -hmm. A 12 certificate and um, <laughs> a fitting in. Mm. Again, we had uh, less in the writhing and so forth in this because of the senses. But uh, I don't feel anywhere down the line and we suffered, really suffered yeah. because of the sensor cuts, I must say. And I thought, uh, you know, given we got a 12 certificate in England and I think a 13 in America, I was very happy with... Uh, yeah, it didn't work out well. One of the uh, groaners. There. One of the groan lines, of course, <laughs> yeah, which and we debated about whether. In fact, I cut it out at one point because I thought this I know, is just too bad. But and I'm not sure whether you convinced me to put it back in. But, <laughs> but of course, people do laugh at it, so it was right to leave it back in. They expect well, yeah, it, don't you, they? You, they always expect something, you know, and I think uh, they don't expect necessarily the most brilliant line, but they expect something. Yes. Here we are in the Peter Lamont set that was uh, three stories high, May all are made out of structural steel. It was for real because everybody had to run around on it, so. Now this is very interesting because now what you're seeing is again Derek Mellings um, at his peak, and I think the this dish, which of course is a is a real dish, but because of the complications of shooting and allowances and so forth, there was no way we could shoot it for real. So while there are um, real shots of the dish, this is all model, and I think he did a fantastic job on this. Yeah, well, of course, to bring it out of the water, we had look to at do this. That yeah, that's all. This is all model. And the this most is... difficult thing with model is water. You always have to build a big enough give it the model. scale and the sense. And I think the mm. dish in our, the real dish is a thousand feet across. I think the model is 50 feet across. Mm -hmm. Now you see the two figures. This is all, of course, digital model, which is uh, is amazing. You know, A lot of people have said to me, oh, how did you ever get the, is it real, that sequence when uh, when the, um, the world's greatest so dish when, comes when out the of water. Well, well, when the transmitter comes out of the water, yeah. Okay, here we are. We're meanwhile back to what we, of course, mirrored earlier on. Now, this is the draining of the lake. I remember we were, remember we talked oh, about know, doing this, and we both it. looked at each other and said, well, let's write it, but we'll never <laughs> do it. You know, it's impossible. Yeah, but it's this kind of stuff that uh, a lot of the kids like, you know. Getting, well, it's what Bond's all about, isn't it? Look at the scale of this thing, you know. And it's, it's, a, perfect, um, it's a perfect replica of the dish. I think in a second uh, you will actually see the real dish. I think there's one shot that we have where they are uh, about to climb onto the dish and it's uh, right. It's wonderful the way that the shadow in there and everything. It's yeah. Like... Well, I think the shadow locks the whole thing into reality. This is all model, of course. But this is the real dish, so it yeah. gives you an idea of the scale, even though, of course, we... Now, that's the real one. And that, of course, is the real transmitter. Yeah, now that's one. actually used to... Um... Uh, it's a radio telescope that's used to investigate deep space in, and uh, down in Puerto Rico. Aren't they saying that if there's any alien mm -hmm. life up there, that this will be the um, I, yeah, transmitter I, that will... Possibly, yeah. It's, um, they like to say that. They like to say it, although the scientists down there really... <laughs> <laughs> shrug their shoulders. Disavow it all. <laughs> well, remember this thing, how we... we <laughs> oh, trying God. to figure out how to write the thing in that we could jam how to design this thing and yeah the, oh my finally God. a big chain drive <laughs> now this is an interesting sequence this is a real combination of location studio model and uh, a bit of digital now that's now this is all studio this stuff mm -hmm. all the close-up stuff of them that's model right and yep. this is all studio studio and uh, all the wide shots like that are model and the points of view like that are the real dish. We roll mm -hmm. the camera down the real dish to That's get right, that kind of camera thing. That's right. right. So, I mean, it's pretty seamless, I think, the whole yeah. sequence. And it's a sequence that I remember uh, thinking about simply because, you know, how the hell do you get them from the edge of the dish into the um, control room fast? Well, that was the only solution. On my cut. Three. It's a great set, this. I mean, he really... Uh, you know, in that true tradition of uh, Bond, it's admittedly the control room again, but it's uh, it's certainly um, very well done by Peter Lamont. And Sean Bean uh, kept it going here. He's he's a good actor. He's very you know he's not too well known in the states now, but I think uh, he has that Sharps Rifle series that he's uh, in England. He's a big star. Very much so, and he's uh, he's, he's very successful in England. A very low key villain, actually. 
Here we are back in the big set, right at the top. That's right, and this is where we had to use the, we would probably get the widest shots of the set. All on different levels. Interesting, the studio that we, uh, or should I say the factory we converted mm. into the studio, had low ceilings, didn't it? Mm. So yeah, in a way everything foot. had to be compressed to... Uh, we had 40 foot ceilings, but, but uh, you know, this we built a huge stages. The two stages we had were as big as uh, any stages in Europe. Yeah. Now, there's a great reaction here, actually, where Bond, he fires the gun. And I think this is perfect Bond. Watch this. Yeah. Just nudges his head back <laughs> like it's a fly buzzing around his um, ear. And I think that's perfect Bond. A good set to work in this. I mean, a lot of space and interesting, uh, a well-designed set. And um, this is something that I enjoyed. Again, of course, we blow the hell out of it at the end of it, but... Uh, as all in all Bond films, every control room seems to erupt at the end of it, but uh, we'll come to. Here's the gas. Remember all this gas you had pouring down, yep. pools of it dripping down? <laughs> but this is how, how to link up all the, this is where we, we kind of linked all these sort of elements. This is interesting, of course, there she is behind the behind the um, tank there. Now, one of the problems with all of this, of course, was that once she went down that ladder, she decides for herself to actually tweak the computers. And uh, how the hell she gets across there without being seen is a complete mystery. But of course, just by smoke and mirrors, you can actually, uh, you can make it convincing. What an unpleasant surprise. We aim to please. Where's so the, uh, this, uh, this was always, uh, these scenes are always, uh, the ones in the Bond films are the most difficult to bring off because they've got, uh, you know, they've got Bond oh, yeah. captured. You want to know what the plot's about, uh, and you have to figure out how he's going to get away. <laughs> well, this is always the point where the villain says, ah, I'm doing this because. That's yeah. right. It's not just the end of the world, Mr. Bond. Right. I have something else in mind. <laughs> yes. yes, that's absolutely true. And they are difficult because, of course, they're expository and so forth. And uh, to be able to kind of maintain a, an edge to them and a pace to them, I think, is, uh, I think that's difficult. And I think uh, hopefully we pulled it off. Endless computers, of course, transferring money and so forth. Huge screen, um, nicely loaned to us by what, Panasonic, was it? Or was it, it was uh, Pioneer. Pioneer, was it? Yeah, yes. there was a big... Uh, I forget how many. It was a huge number of uh, screens, individual screens in there. And of course, product placement is a big thing in a Bond film. I mean, uh, uh, Pierce was outfitted by Brioni, and he wore mm -hmm. Omega watches and so forth. I mean, it's a big thing in movies these days. The real um, trick is to try and make sure it doesn't scream out at an audience. Yeah, you can't really jam it down everyone's throats. It brings them out of the movie and makes them feel like they're just being sold something but on the other hand you like to use real products in the film to give it authenticity you yes know? no you can't manufacture all fictitious products you know? yes this was good i was uh, when she's dragged in and it's, a, it's an interesting speech the speech about um bonds you know mm -hmm. how many martinis uh, all that stuff and how many does it sue the men you killed or now that uh, all comes that's about the from michael france wasn't it that was from from the original script that whole speech because it was a very eloquent speech mm -hmm. and uh, um it really strikes a chord and i think it was the best speech michael uh, uh, wrote in that script yeah well a lot of his uh, material you know came through in the final Result. England is about to learn the cost of I think all the writers made major contributions, each one of them. You know, they were good to work with. Yes, it's interesting. I, I suppose an awful lot of people don't realize quite how much the um, how much work does go into the script and the various writers and so forth. But it's an agonizing process, I find. It's an agonizingly difficult to... You know, I, I, you know, I think of a producer's work, uh, if he does it right, uh, you know, uh, most of the work goes in before the cameras start. It's yeah. Really well, 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 if you remember, one of the things we discussed with all of this was simply that we had to get, we had to shoot the script. We were going to shoot a film of a certain length, and we weren't going to shoot a lot of extra scenes that were going to end up on the cutting room floor. And I think of the scenes we shot uh, or that were cut, I think perhaps two were cut, weren't they? Yeah. We two very cut. tiny scenes. Two or three were cut, amounting to no more than as scenes three minutes in yeah, total. All the, all the rest of the stuff were trims on the yep. existing scenes. Yeah. Now this is a great piece of editing coming up where he sits down and he starts 
um, flipping the pen and pressing the end of the pen. And I think uh, Terry, you know, um, makes a terrific job of the the way he cuts this scene. I think Isabella did well the way she came in and whacked him. She really looked like you believe it, don't you? <laughs> Yes, the little bugger deserved it. Absolutely no question about that. Here he is. Yeah, I was down in uh, in New York on uh, on you know Forty Sixth Street and Broadway when I saw this scene on the opening night. Yeah, and every click of the pen, the audience was going ooh, oh, yeah. you know, they really reacted to this. It uh, it was very satisfying because you're never quite sure if everyone's getting it. Well, it's also such a in a way, it's a kind of ludicrous concept in a way because you know what I mean. You think, oh my God, the clicking pen is it? Is it? Uh, but it comes off, and yes, you're right. The audience always used to react to that. And this is a good line. She, it goes back to what she, he said to her in the bed. You know, sort of, <laughs> she throws the back at him. Never yes, always call their bluff. Yes, know? always got a big laugh, didn't it? Which was uh, it's very gratifying actually when the lines do actually get the laughs and consistently get the laughs. And. Uh, and they they, they 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 both played them very well. They they're both extremely good at humour. There's a great moment here where he drops the pen. That was an accident actually when we we're filming. But Terry, being the red, the editor he is, somehow incorporated it into the. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Here we are, back on track. Okay. Another oh. big bang. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> God, this was a this was a mammoth, wasn't it? This ma one. Oh, this whole thing going up and all this guys on fire and all yeah. these stunt people and oh my god, that was a major. We actually did destroy the set basically, didn't we? When that whole thing well, it was, went up. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of take twos left. No, I think I think it all had to be one take. Either way, I'm fine. Thank you very much. There. Yeah, this was a big. Oh Again, everything was very safe. You know, uh, no one was hurt during that, uh, that scene. And uh, she this again, was actually out on location, by the way. All the reverses, and then the, uh, this way is in the studio. That's correct. Yeah. No, you're right. It was a safe, uh, safe thing. Well, it's the stuntmen and the uh, special effects people are working together. Well, I think there were two injuries. One before we started, where uh, I they think were practicing and they, they were practicing repelling and repelling, and the, the rope. Uh, the guy slipped. On the guy thing. slipped and hurt his back very badly and was in plaster for about four months. The other was the guy who was driving the tank who broke his wrist at one point, came off a motorbike. Mm -hmm. These are nightmare scenes to set up because every bit has got, you know, the fires have to be lit, everything has got to be, you know, on standby. All the people racing to go in and put them out for safety. And I mean, I have to tell you that. Uh, they're very complicated. Now this is a, a combination, again, this whole sequence of studio, of model, of the real thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pretty seamless, don't you? It in is, terms it of, really works. I mean, again, when we went out there, I remember to begin with, we used to have long meetings discussing this. And we'd come to grind to a halt because the whole horror and impossibility of it all seemed... But well, you have to know exactly what you can need to build and what you need to shoot for real. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's Exactly right, and uh, there we go. So again, there's a combination of the real, That's the, real. yeah, the yeah, studio, this stuff. Well, they let us on this uh, thing, and no, I actually went up there and walked around. Oh, you did? Yeah. And, uh, and when we wrecked it, and uh, some of the shooting, and it was, um, it's scary because when you look down, there's there's an open grid. You're standing on like you feel like you're standing on air. You know, it's not uh, all those platforms are all open. Steel. Yeah. Here we go. That's all, a good. Oh, that was great. up there. They, yeah. The, the doubles working up yep. there and uh, doing those stunts. It's it all cuts pretty far. Five hundred feet off the ground. Yep. And again, the chain room worked extremely well. That was a kind of lady. Remember, we changed. Yes. It I can't quite remember what <laughs> well, we had before. Wanted, I had to yeah. redraw. I had to redraw the whole thing. But it, it, it kind of. We had to come up with something that was pretty simple and, and people understood. Now these are the two guys doing it themselves, basically, which is uh, not over the uh, those stuntmen obviously doing that sequence. But mm -hmm. Pierce and uh, and Sean rehearsed this stuff, and the fight you'll see, the fist fight that's coming up, uh, they did just about everything in the fight. I remember no you doubles. saying you wanted to duplicate from Russia with Love the fight in the train. You you always thought that was the best, and you wanted to get that physicality back in. That's right, and you know a uh, 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 heavy heavy hitting in a very small space and uh, I always thought that was a great sequence in From Russia With Love 
and uh, we tried to kind of um, duplicate it, I suppose. It was uh, in this um, upcoming sequence. That sequence there's a combination of studio and uh, the real thing. And yeah, this is the fight that's coming up. This, this is the fight that's fight. coming up, yeah. And they did it all except for one? One, one shot one. as he goes through the wall. Yeah. That was the only thing. And uh, Other than that, it's all them. It's amazing. Yeah. They rehearsed with Simon for a long time. It was really good. They sell it really well, these two. I shot all this handheld, of course, because uh, just to give the sort of violence of the piece. Light, the lighting was good. In yeah, too. Uh, very low Phil key. did a great job of kind of getting a real atmosphere of being inside this claustrophobic space. Yeah. Which just... These scenes and the upcoming scenes on the ladder, I think, were possibly some of the most difficult to uh, Yeah, to that achieve. ladder work uh, is hard because it's all that... You can't really hold people in a total vertical, and yet you need some of that. And an awful lot of green screen and stuff, but I, I think it worked extremely well. And, uh, you know, here he's got the gun on Bond. Nobody ever pulls the trigger straight away on Bond. There's always some no, kind of speech go. where, even meanwhile, he gets away. Now, this is all green screen. Yeah. Very good model, green screen. Now, that's the shot where Pierce did his Yeah, nuts. and he hurt, hurt his hand, didn't he? He, he hurt yeah. his hand and he hurt his back. And I said, I want to do take two. And he said, right. He said, <laughs> he screamed at me, you get one more take, and that's it. <laughs> you can blame him. It looks very convincing, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really... Yeah, we, had, we had to figure out the angles, where the where that little yeah, sump well, that would be where in little the picture. Where the sump would be, yeah. <laughs> Very convincing to me. It was. It was. Some of this is uh, in the painted background yeah. in the studio. Some's outside. Some's we did a lot of sky replacements to get the matching, um, to get the matching correct. Because obviously, if you're shooting between model, the location, and the studio, it's almost impossible to match. So you can replace skies digitally, um, uh, relatively simply. So uh, that's what we did. This is a great stunt coming up. Oh no, he's gone down the ladder already, has he? Yeah. Yes, that's so right. Did the, they did that fall. Yeah. Great angle that because there's a wire leading up that they took out digitally. There he is. Oh my ouch. It's all good stuff. Oh look marvellous, the sequence. Now here's they are out. This is uh, outside. Where where we was there? Oops, no. That's more. Uh, that's digital, of course. It's the jump. Yeah, and then we go to the model for the bit where, of course, he uh, falls. he falls. All of that's model. Again, it's pretty seamless. All that stuff. He lets him go. Nice bond. We actually were worried about that. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I shot an extra one. Yeah, just in case. So. Uh, and this fall, this guy, the stuntman that did oh. that, was pretty good. Yes. Because that was a, a it, it, it's harder than it looks because there's no padding. I mean, you just have padding on your back. Yeah. Really. Now here's interesting. I had to cut off the shot very quickly because of the blood quotient, a tiny bit of blood on his mouth, and the sensors objected. Now to you it. remember this shot? We, we were the last day of shooting. Oh, don't tell <laughs> me. <laughs> and we were waiting for the sun and waiting. Oh, it was for horrendous. The, oh, I really was. It was a, was it a Saturday? We sat yes, there we were there and for all day Saturday and I all didn't cloud. want to go another week. <laughs> And what did we get? Two minutes of sun. I it think that's the shot there. The shot. That's yep. the shot. And we got it. Otherwise, we would have been back. Oh, God. God. Yeah. We finally, it was the last day of shooting. What a... I was so relieved. This again looks, uh, you know, I mean, it's a true Bond tradition. Everything blowing up and there's Trevelyan copying it. You know, marvelous kind of... How many times we shoot this? Oh, my God. I think ten times. Mm. You know, to get the rubble and the kind of look of the thing all, you know, it was... Here he is. And here's now, this another is... shot, the frozen shot. I remember that, the tanks oh, blowing God, up. God, how many times did we do that to try and get it right? We had poor Arthur Worcester in there shooting it, and then you came down and shot it, and it was just... And then, that, that's right, and then one tank didn't blow, oh. and so, anyway, we find the God of course, as one always does with these things. There he is. Now, that's at Planet Hollywood, right? Yes. <laughs> in the window in <laughs> Oh, London. is it? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> And this, of course, we're seeing the last scene of the movie, as always, of course, is shot very early on in the schedule. This is at Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Oh, this was another one. Remember, we were chasing the sun. Yeah, I had to finish at five thirty. The sun was well, down. This was just the last shot of the day. It was. Yep. The sun was actually moving up the background. And I remember kept on moving across the falling field. Falling into each other's <laughs> arms at the end. Oh my God, we got this. So this whole scene was shot by five thirty in the afternoon, mm. one day. I remember. Yeah. Well, we had to do yeah the uh, the, the scenes coming up are the ones we shot yes. earlier. Yes, that's right. Which was Joe Don and all the Marines. That's about to happen. Yeah. Now, those Marines are producers' joy. They come with all their wardrobe and they do their own makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and from a director's point of view, they do exactly what you tell them. You say, "Lie there for an hour." They lie there for an hour. I, I mean, know all those guys would lie there incredible. without making a peep. And I'd say to the uh, commanding officer, "Well, they can all they yeah. can all um, get up now. It's fine. Give them a break." He said, "No, no, they can stay down there." That's right. I was afraid of walking on them going through there. You, you know, they were so still. You could walk on them. And uh, the helicopters, the Hueys, the, the three Hueys had to drop in and so forth. I mean, uh, it's a fun scene for an end of, end of uh, yeah. Bond. I think it worked, and it's, we're always looking for a button to the movie, which one always does. But um, I think it works really well. I liked it. Then it goes out with a nice smile. Three helicopters take off. I always thought that the helicopter with Bond and Natalia should blow up like everything else in the movie, <laughs> just as it's disappearing, the credits are rolling. But uh, I was overruled on that one, so... There we are. Well, you know, <laughs> sitting here and talking about it and thinking about it, it uh, it was fun, really. You know, it, it had its moments, but it uh, I guess my memories are. I, I think they're to forget all good the advice. bad times and just. Well, you know, time. filming is always a battleground. That's the point, and uh, I think the studio were terrific. And I feel that the um, you, you sort of feel in the aftermath we had a lot of number crunching or one particular period where we had to crunch numbers. We didn't. Uh, by Hollywood standards, have the biggest budget in the world. It was a big budget, but uh, but but I think that makes you work harder to and, and look for simpler solutions, which are often the best solutions. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's good discipline. Yeah. And anyway, there it is. To the memory of Derek Mannings. Unfortunately, he died uh, just what two months after we finished. He was. That's right. He died, and it was. Uh, it was terrible. He was sick during the filming, but it never. He never let it up. He. He never complained. He was. He. He was an instinctive model maker, and um, certainly the best in England, if not the best in the world, in my view. Yeah, and I had worked with him oh twenty years. You know, and. Uh, he actually got an Academy Award, I think, for Superman with Dick Donner. I think that was his. Uh, you know, that was the highlight of his career. But I think his models have never been better than in this movie. And, uh, you know, as a tribute to him, I don't think uh, it could be better. But he's obviously sorely missed. And for the next Bond film, you know, um, yeah. one wonders who the hell you will actually get to, you know, replace a genius like that. I don't know. But it was good. We had a, we had a, a mixture of a lot of our people who've been with the Bonds for a long time. We had a lot of good newcomers. Uh, and uh, it was a good mix. It was a very good mix. It was a very tough film. I mean, I think we all looked at each other right at the beginning of this movie and said, well, you know, we've got one chance with it. Do you remember we said, if we don't get this right, the series is dead, <laughs> was what we thought. And uh, that was very much our attitude. And I must say that, um, you know, you guys as producers, uh, both you, you and Barbara, um, kind of gave us free reign to do what, and on the other hand, pulled us in when we needed pulling in. And you know the end result. I think if we had to do it again, I would. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I, to know I, it's hard to know it. quite where we could. Um, well, you're, uh, you know, you're great to work with because you have a, you know what what you need to get to make the thing work, and you also s know what it means to save a, you know, when you have to save money, and uh, that, well, there's nothing more a producer can ask of a director than that. Well, I think the whole secret of filmmaking is in the preparation, in my view. I think that the and we did we did a lot of preparation on this. We got the script right, I think, uh, before we started shooting, and I don't think we fell into any of the traps that perhaps um, you know uh, often movies fall into. I and know. I Whenever I hear that someone's been they're shooting a film and they've asked someone to come out and do a rewrite on the ending, you know, trouble is brewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so many films now, of course, in Hollywood. You can't um, plan a film that way. No, but they reshoot the endings endlessly. I mean, there's probably, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but it certainly must be... Uh, I know there are three filming in London right now where they're reshooting the endings. But that's, you know, at least they've decided they want to do something, but sometimes they just start rewriting in the middle, and, oh, that's that's a kiss of death. Anyway, it was great fun. Yeah, we Martin, enjoyed it. It was fun. Thanks a lot. It was terrific. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.